the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Father, tonight, this is a very special teaching. It's one that you have brought, one of the mysteries of the kingdom. It has brought wisdom to the life of many. Let it bring wisdom to your people tonight. This is a prayer from the depth of my heart. And I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that it will change our lives in Jesus' name. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I want to share with you a very deep spiritual mystery tonight that controls relevance. A mystery tonight that controls the continuity of the impact upon the life of man. Hallelujah. This is a mystery that controls transgenerational relevance. It is the key that can keep you after many years, even when people are falling by the wayside. The Bible says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. That means that just because you started well, does not mean you will finish well. Just because you started um, from a standpoint of relevance and impact, it does not mean that you will finish that way. Pay attention. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We'll read from verse 1 to 8. To everything there is a season. Someone says season. So the Bible tells us that there are seasons. And a time to every purpose under the heavens. Uh -huh. There is a time to be born, it says. There is a time to die. There is a time to plant. There is a time to pluck up that which is planted. Verse 3. There is a time to kill. There is a time to heal. There is a time to break down. There is a time to build up. Verse 4. There is a time to weep. There is a time to laugh. There is a time to mourn. There is a time to dance. There is a time to cast away stones. And there is a time to gather stones together. There is a time to embrace. And there is a time to refrain from embracing. We are still reading. There is a time to get. And there is a time to lose. There is a time to keep. And there is a time to cast away. There is a time to rend. And there is a time to sow. There is a time to keep silence and there is a time to speak. The last verse. There is a time to love and there is a time to hate. There is a time for war and there is a time of peace. Oh intelligent student, what was the common word in every sentence? Time. 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 Everything kept changing except one word. Time. He connected everything to times and he connected everything to seasons. First Chronicles chapter 12, please, and verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. And of the children of Issachar, the Bible says, which were men. Help us under the anointing, please. They were men that had understanding of the times. He says, and they knew what Israel ought to do. As a result, the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. They were people who had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel had to do. Ready for the last verse? Psalm 90 and verse 12. A verse for wise people. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts 
unto wisdom. Can we read it together? One to read. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Please may I request that protocol all the vacant seats aside from these ones. Please let them be filled. There's no reason why we should have empty seats when there are people standing. Please. Please. Hallelujah. We rise in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know. I've taught you that a mystery is a modus operandi, a, a body of knowledge that is privy to a group of people. In this case, privy to believers, men and women who are in Christ. And so when the Bible talks about the mysteries of the kingdom, it is a revelation of the modus operandi of the kingdom, the way the kingdom operates, so that by accessing these mysteries, we can reign, we can excel in life, we can live when the Lord opened me up to this truth, it so impacted my life. I, I wish that I, I could gather the whole world and preach this message to everyone alive. Because, as you will be learning, there are severe consequences for not knowing these truths that I'm about to share. It does not matter whether you are a pastor, a politician, a businessman. It doesn't matter what walk of life, young, old. This is a truth that applies to all. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This is the secret for transgenerational relevance. You understand what I'm teaching you tonight? After 30 years, you will still be standing. Standing strong and doing so much for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 41, please pay attention, that there was a king in Egypt called the Pharaoh of Egypt. Is that true? And then the Bible says, once upon a time that this Pharaoh of Egypt went to bed. And this Pharaoh had a dream. And it was a very, very mysterious dream. It was a dream that troubled him. He was so troubled by that dream when he woke up. The Bible says, he gathered all his wise men. We're going to read it, but just a background. And he said, what is the meaning of this? I'm, I'm, I'm faced with a dream here that I cannot interpret. That dream you see, ladies and gentlemen, controls a mystery. There is a revelation behind that dream. The first thing I may want to say is, is powerful. Because there are certain levels of revelation you cannot be trusted with until you rise to certain realms. The dream that Pharaoh had even though he did not honor the God of the Hebrews, the God of heaven, he was the only one who was in a position to do something about that dream. There are times that God will have to make do with unbelievers because there are no sufficient unbelievers in strategic positions that can allow God to reveal some things. Hallelujah. Which is dangerous. We must never get to a point in our lives where God would have to teach us through unbelievers. Simply because believers have not accepted positions of strategic influence to allow them host the purposes of God for a season or for a generation. Anyway, but in this case, so Pharaoh has this dream and he calls on the people and eventually Joseph comes and he begins a discussion that will be a lesson for us tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. Please follow me patiently as we explore this dream. Because the dream is a mystery. A mystery that speaks of a, um, a reality that is in the life of all men. Failure to know this will cost you more than you can imagine. Genesis 41 from verse 1. Help us Holy Spirit. And it came to pass at the end of two full years... That Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. Verse 2. It's a long reading. Please be patient. Media, let's walk together. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kind and fat-fleshed, and they fed in the midew. Uh -huh. Behold, 
seven other kind came up after them out of the river ill-favored and lean-fleshed was just talking of cows or calves and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river and the ill-favored and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well favored and fat kind this is the first mystery this is his dream now pharaoh has a dream and he's seen two sets of cows one fat healthy looking the other slim and then in the process of time remember we're dealing with time that the lean ones ate the fat ones and never increased in size just went like that verse 5 and he slept and dreamed the second time and behold seven ears of corn came up before one stock rank and good next verse please and behold seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them and the seven thin years devoured the seven rank and full ears and pharaoh awoke and behold it was a dream and it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the magicians of egypt and all the wise men thereof and pharaoh told them his dream but there was none that could interpret them unto pharaoh follow carefully then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wrought with his servant and put me in the ward, in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. He's narrating something that happened. And we dreamed a dream in one night. I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man an hebrew servant to the captain of the guard and we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams to each man according to his dream did he interpret and it came to pass as he interpreted to us so it was me he restored unto mine office and him he hanged 14 and pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto pharaoh pharaoh said unto joseph i have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it are we still together and i have heard of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it next verse joseph answered pharaoh saying it is not in me god shall give pharaoh an answer of peace pharaoh narrates the dream one more time in case you didn't get it the first time let's try it again in my dream he said behold i stood upon the bank of the river and behold there came up out of the river seven kind fat-fleshed and well favored and they fed in the middle and behold seven other kind came up after them poor and very ill ill-favored and lean flesh such as i never saw in all the land of egypt for badness and the lean and ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind 21 and when they had eaten them up now this is the fearful part of the statement it could not be known that they had eaten them so this is not an issue of hunger now but they were still ill favored as at the beginning so i awoke and i saw in my dream and behold seven ears came out in one stalk full and good and behold seven ears withered thin and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them and the thin ears devoured the seven good ears and i told this unto the magicians but there was none that could declare it unto me 25 and joseph said unto pharaoh the dream that fell the dream of pharaoh is one and god had shown pharaoh what he is about to do the dream that pharaoh had 
Pharaoh, forget about all of the different things you saw. It is the same thing you have seen. Isn't it powerful? Different scenarios, but the message is the same. God had to keep emphasizing to Pharaoh, pay attention, because what I am showing you will surely come to pass. Now, Joseph is interpreting the dream. Joseph said unto, okay, next, verse 26, the seven good kind are seven years. That means the cows have nothing to do with cows. The plants have nothing to do with plants. Can you already see that many people have been making mistakes in their interpretation of dreams? If many of you were to interpret these dreams now, you will be surprised at the many ungodly, extra-biblical interpretations that will come from this dream. Is that true? Most people will start talking about something that God even is not, his attention is not there. This already is a lesson that it truly takes grace from God to interpret correctly. I probably would have failed this interpretation woefully, hands down. Who would ever know that a cow and plants could mean time? He said, what you saw has nothing to do with animals or plants. It is a mystery of time. The seven good kind are seven years. Everybody shout time. Please say after me, years. Keep the scripture there, please. Keep the scripture. Keep the scripture. We're still working on it, media. And he says the seven good years are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are also seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Now, pay attention. Let's take it again. You are Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And you go to bed. And out of the many, many things you can see from the realm of the spirit, God superimposes your revelations to bring a matter of urgency that Joseph says will surely come to pass. And then you have this dream. And this young Hebrew boy comes to tell you the dream represents two sets of time. Are we still together? That the seven good cows, just like the plants, are seven good years. And that the other one represents seven years also. And here is the mystery that years can eat years. I understand that animals can eat other animals. Is that true? But I never knew that time can also eat time. Pay attention now. That seven years of plenty can be eaten by seven years of famine to the degree that you would never imagine that there was once years of plenty. This is a very powerful mystery. Please pay attention. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten. Shall forgotten. Hmm. In the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. 31. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following. For it shall be very grievous. Next verse. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and it will surely God will surely bring it to pass now therefore let Pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt he's bringing a solution now let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up a fifth part 20% 
of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come. And lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh. And let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store in the land against the seven years of famine. Is someone learning already? Which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land perish not throughout the famine. Just stop there. We will take it from 37 shortly. Now please look up. Pharaoh is receiving counsel from a young boy empowered by the Spirit of God. And he's sharing a mystery that Pharaoh, no matter how powerful you are, no matter how powerful Egypt is, God is revealing to you that there is a law, the law of seasons, that it is a law that will switch. It has nothing to do with you being good. It has nothing to do with you being bad. It is the law of seasons. Is that true? And that in every man's life, born again or not, this law is not one you can pray out of your life. It is established. Pharaoh, what you have is not just a dream for Egypt. It's a mystery to be given to men. That in the life of every man born of a woman, the law of seasons is applicable to all. There will always be seasons of plenty represented by the fat cows. And there will always be seasons of leanness. The difference is whether you heed to the advice of Joseph or otherwise. Those who disobey Joseph are about to pay the price with their entire lifetime. Because years can eat years. Are we blessed? Joseph tells Pharaoh, this is not something you can pray and say, God, change it. No. You see, let me tell you this. When God created the earth, the Bible tells us that he made the stars to signify times and seasons. The law of seasons is a very powerful spiritual law that many believers have not been taught. And many well-meaning, innocent people have had to pay the price because they did not know how to discern seasons. Our opening scripture, Ecclesiastes says there is a time for everything. It begins to list various events, but the consistent factor is that there is a time for them. Hallelujah. Yes. Pharaoh Hunger is about to come to the earth. Famine is about to come to the earth. And that includes Egypt. But you have a chance now. There is a season. Here in Africa, especially in Nigeria, we have, you know, and all of that. But then let's walk with what we know. We have rainy season and dry seasons. Please look up. How many of you know that all those seasons have their features? Is that true? Yes. When it is rainy, are we together now? It doesn't matter whether you are rich or poor, educated or uneducated. The moment it is rainy season, there are certain things that are given to you by reason of the season. The land is soft enough for cultivation. You do not need to labor so much to till the ground because the rain has done that for any season. Why? Because the season comes with it an advantage of a cool weather. You may not go through so much labor to clean and fight dust because the season itself helps to purify the air. If that season is done, it will switch to another season and you will look at the ground as though water never fell on it. Is that true? You will see the ground cracked. You will see wind that was ever green now looks dry and brown. And it looks like water never fell there. You look at the clouds and they are so clear you come out in the night and you can see the stars. Not because something else happened to your eyes. An advantage of seasons. Now it is still possible to farm during the dry season. But you will have to find a way of outsourcing water to simulate a rainy season during dry season for the plants to grow. 
This is very powerful. You can afford to be careless with your car, for instance, during the dry season. Your wiper is not working. Your lights are not working. You can afford. Your tires are not strong. You can play all those games. But when it is rainy season, one night you just come out and without any notification, a heavy downpour comes and you see the consequences of not having a good wiper. Is that true? You may not know how wrong you are during the dry season, but another season can show you whether you were doing right or not. Seasons are powerful. There are many things you may be doing wrong, but just because you have not arrived at a season that will show you how wrong you are, you may think you are right for a long time until seasons change. And there are times you can be doing something very right and look like a fool for many years because the season that shows your wisdom has not yet come. Once upon a time, the wisdom of Noah looked like foolishness because the season of rain had not come. Is that true? He kept putting the animals there and others were laughing at him and said, to what end is this? But a season would soon come. Pharaoh, what you saw is a mystery that happens to all men. That no, no matter how anointed, no church, no politician, no government, no nation has one season forever. Oscillating seasons is part of the law of seasons that all men must understand. Why am I telling you this? I'm teaching this message out of a heart of passion and sincerity with, with no sense of sarcasm whatsoever. Have you seen people who maximize certain seasons in their lives but they forgot that seasons will change and they ignored the advice of joseph until the seasons changed this has caught up with politicians it is terrible to be out of relevance in your lifetime this has caught up with men of god this has caught up with family people changing seasons that no season no season ever remain to a point of penury there are politicians today who were once instruments of awe and honor and because of lack of discernment of seasons they came down there are sincere men of god they didn't backslide but they were careless with the discernment of seasons and today they have been brought down to nothingness pharaoh the dream that you have is deliverance it is a mystery that if you understand will save you the law of seasons is god speaking to us in every man's life there will be this season of fatness and there will be this season of lean cows what do they mean write this down according to the vision or the dream of Pharaoh and the interpretation of Joseph. The seven years of plenty represents seasons of ease, seasons of abundance, and seasons of opportunities. The seven years of the fat calves, the seven years of the, or the seven years of fat corn and, and the flourishing plants represent seven years of ease e-a-s-e -E. years of abundance and years of opportunities please if you're writing underline the word opportunity seven years of fat cows represent years of opportunity what opportunity opportunity to know god opportunity to maximize destiny opportunity to invest in your life and then the seven years of famine represent moments of constraint moments of inconvenience moments of scarcity the seven years of famine represent moments of constraint moments of inconvenience moments of scarcity for various reasons for instance let's use biological age how many of you agree 
that by the time a man is 60 or 70 years, prepared or not, seasons would have changed. The strength that you have when you were 10, 20, 30 may not be there again. You may not have that kind of energy again. Seasons have changed. And if you are a worker in this country, maybe a, a federal government worker, a civil servant, prepared or not, there's something called retirement. Is that true? The meaning of that is that you may not have the opportunity to go to work and collect a regular salary again. The reason why pension works is because it's part of obedience to the advice of Joseph. Is that true? That from your seven years of work, something is kept so that by the time you retire, it will be given to you again. We are coming there. So by the time a young man in ministry, who is probably in his 30s or 40s, is now living in the season of a man who is 70, 80 years, a man who may not have the energy to run around, and the young man too is doing man of God, big man. You know what you are doing? You are already destroying the opportunity that you have for the seasons that are coming. Let me tell you this. There are many people, there are... I watched an obituary there. It's a course in the school of ministry under personal transformation. I, I teach the students on something called the graph of life. It's an attempt to give the students wisdom to help them understand the brevity of life to the end that they live efficient and effective lives. Are we together? And this, this came as a result of an obituary I saw. Please look up. In this obituary, it was a two or three minute um, TV program. And this is what I saw. I saw a man who was in his late 80s now had died and they were announcing but for some reason they were able to gather his photos i don't know how they found it photos when he was a young boy to a teenager a young adult an adult in his middle age becoming elderly an old man together with his grandchildren and then a few moments on the sick bed before he died they ran that slide within two minutes and i saw a man's entire destiny run on a slide within two minutes when i watched that it had an impact on my life and that's where the scriptures so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom and i made up my mind that i was going to build a course out of that experience to teach the school of ministry students that as 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 long as life looks it is deceptively brief there is a hymn that says life at best is very brief like the falling of a leaf hallelujah are we learning something tonight Please do not take anything I'm teaching tonight personal. It is truth that I will give you. I have seen people in old age today with nobody to help them. They walk alone as though they were never, they never had the privilege of youthfulness. And the question I'm tempted to ask is what did they do with those days? Because at that time the lean cows have come to eat up the fat ones. I told you yes can eat years there are people today who retired as directors ceos and yet they may not be able to raise hundred thousand with honor because during their time of glory they did not know that seasons change there are musicians today respectfully speaking there are sportsmen today once upon a time if you mention their names people will stay awake but today they can move around on the road and you see them and not even care about them why because seasons have changed is that true yes once upon a time in this nation when you mention certain names once upon a time in Africa, when you mention certain names, as powerful as these great men are, look at men like Reinhard Bonke, look at men like T.L. Osborne, look at men like um, Billy Graham. As much as we love them, 
the truth is whether we like it or not according to the law of seasons eventually they have gone seasons that means everybody who finds himself on the stage you better realize someone left there before you got there and realize that very soon the light of destiny is pushing you out now listen there is the deception that comes with these seasons of glory it makes you believe you will never leave the stage for any reason this has deceived men of god this has deceived people in politics this has also deceived parents they forgot that these children will one day grow and they will be young and they treated the children in an evil way many of them today are old and wrinkled and left alone by angry adults who were once babies there are nations today who did not take advantage of their human capital to invest in the young people during the seasons of power. Most of those young people are now the thieves that cause mayhem in society. There are people who rose in honor. They never raised anybody in their lifetime. They didn't raise anybody from their community they are the only ones and when the devil attacked them, he got them alone because they had no support system. Learn the wisdom that comes from this mystery tonight. Pharaoh, the dream is twice because it is established. There is nothing you can do against it. You can only build a system to overcome it. Hallelujah. Yes, it is a dangerous thing to once be relevant. It is a dangerous thing that in your lifetime, you are still alive and yet your life becomes a warning, not a message. They tell people, if you want to go far, please don't use this reference. You are still alive and breathing. Are we learning? So we know that there are alternating seasons in the life of anyone. The moment you see rainy season, rainy season comes with a letter from dry season, I am coming. The moment you see dry season, dry season comes with a letter from rainy season, I am coming. If you receive the season and don't receive the letter that prepares you for the next season, you will be in trouble. The moment you see men celebrating you and saying, wow, triumphant entry, remember, one day the same people will say, crucify him. The moment you see people saying, crucify him, remember that one day John will also stand close to the cross. Listen, if you master seasons, you will remain relevant through seasons. I'm speaking because some of you are in these seasons right now. You can be in a season where nobody knows you. You're a man of God who is being made by God. Nobody knows you, no invitation, no fame, no glory, no nothing. And if you do not do anything with that season, the day your season of appearing comes, prepared or not. You see, do you know once upon in a time in my life, I had the luxury to pray I could lock myself even if it's for three days at will and not come out because I had the time. Today, I don't have that kind of time. If I want to make that kind of time, I will have to go out of my way. Many programs will suffer just because I want three days to myself. Changing seasons. Young lady, now that you do not have children, God says fast for three days. And he said, no, you don't know the days that are coming. You don't know the responsibility of the attacks that can come on your children. You are enjoying the fat cows. And God is saying, pray. Young man, you want to start ministry? You are moving around with protocol. God is saying, nonsense, sit down. There are days coming. You do not know the, the demons that attack mantles and anointings. Prepare. Because where I am sending you to, you will need power in the spirit for the kind of results you want. Can I tell you, don't let people pity you out of preparing for great seasons. Sometimes people can love you too much. They will say, this is too much. This fasting is too much. This thing is too much. They don't know the other seasons coming. 
Shalekatoshka de Branda Gatuziata. Shaleke Bereko to Siatabala. God says, I want to take you and give you an influence with kings. And the Lord says, go for another degree. Go for another program. And they say, it's too much. And the devil is deceiving you. And time is going. Don't say there's time, there's time for everything. But let me tell you, there are, when you buy a product, there's something written on the product. Best before. That means if you want to enjoy this product, consume it. Before certain times. Imagine a man of 45 years going to primary school. Yes, no knowledge is a waste. But as far as I'm concerned, if I'm the teacher, that man will not write exams. I will just give him tea and say go. Because I know that he's most likely wasting his time there. When the young people are jumping and rejoicing, that man will be thinking of his child. What is wrong with my child now? Seasons. There are four major seasons in a man's life the seasons in every man's life is broken into four 25 year circles please listen there is the morning stage of every man's life this represents the first 25 years of your life whether you are prepared or not the first 25 years of every man's life represents the morning stage this is the stage where you can make mistakes and go life scot-free. Life will forgive you. There are certain things that should have happened to your destiny at that stage. By the time you are 25 and certain things have not happened, time is already against you. According to God's expectation, by 25 years, you should have found Jesus Christ. You should not be loitering around hoping to guess what salvation is. No. By 25, you should be filled with the Holy Ghost. By 25, you should have mastered the keys of the kingdom. By 25, you should have built strategic destiny relationships. There are many people who got born again at 30. You are already five years behind schedule of seasons. Someone of 18 years can be playing with his life. You who is 35 years, you are joining him to play. Who is foolish? That person can play around with his life and repent later on and still walk within the 25 years. You, that time has already gone. You don't have that time again. First 25 years of your life is a time for massive investment in your spirit, a prayer bank, word bank. That is the time to have a track record of commitment to God. The next phase of your life is called the afternoon stage. The morning stage is the stage of learning. The afternoon stage is the stage of execution. Represents the next 25 years of your life. From 26 to 50 years. That is not the stage of rehearsal. If you are still learning at that stage, you are behind time. You are merging two seasons in one. That means you need an extra grace from God. I'm saying it because there are many people, God is telling you that right now, you miss the first 25 years of your life. You are in the second 25 years, but you are still carrying over the, the first 25 years. It means you must pray more. It means you must invest more time. An old man of 60 years is sleeping. You too, you are sleeping. Are we learning something tonight? The stage of execution. Do you know in this nation, there are people who became presidents in their 30s across the world. Is that true? Jesus Christ. Oh, I love Jesus. Look what he was doing at age 12. You now understand? Because he knew that destiny is measured in time. At age 12, when his contemporaries were running around and managing the pressures of teenage, what do you think Jesus was doing? He was at the temple with those who had gone ahead redeeming the time. When his parents came to drive him, he said, do you not know I should be about my father's business? That is a 12-year-old child. For the next 18 years, we do not hear of Jesus again. The next time he shows up, he's a 30-year-old man. Prepared with stature. And in three and a half years, he finished his assignment and signed it. Till today, nobody has been able to produce that kind of result. 
30 years. Imagine someone who gets born again at 45. The time it will take you to know the Holy Ghost. The time it will take you to find a Bible-believing church. The time it will take you to learn the principles of the kingdom. Is God speaking to us? So the second season of your life, the season of execution, walking in the fullness of purpose and your assignment from 26 to 50. The third season in your life is called the evening stage. This is the stage of legacy where at this point you are not trying to prove a point again. It is expected that within that time, that time of your life, the afternoon stage, like the sun shines brightest in the afternoon. That is the stage of maximum kingdom impact. By the time you are 51, down to 75, is a stage of legacy. That's when you begin to build institutions that reflect your value. Institutions that are prepared to outlive you. You are not successful until there is a generation that becomes loyal to your thoughts. You cannot mark your script and give yourself a grade. It is one generation that will tell us whether you are successful. Our success is proof that Jesus succeeded. It is the success of your children that show whether you succeeded. No matter what you are enjoying now, you are still a student. It is when someone comes who, is, who comes out of you and now succeeds... That is when we will know you have succeeded. Is God helping us tonight? Yes. The stage of legacy. That is the stage where you turn back and begin to mentor and build the generations coming. Teaching them from your mistakes. Passionately pouring your heart and telling them when you get here, even though it does not look like there is a hole, jump it. I didn't know this when I was there and it cost me 10 years extra. Hear me? There are young people today who are sleeping 8 hours in one day. Let me give you an advice. If you sleep 8 hours out of 24 years, by the time you are 30 years, you've slept for 10 years of your life. Sleeping for 10 years at age 30. Can I tell you the honest truth? I say this with every sense of respect to everybody, but particularly to the young people. Be careful with this overseeking comfort at an early stage in life. We have a generation that is so passionate about comfort. At age 20, you are already looking for, I don't, don't, I don't want anything that pushes me. Hi. You read the Bible for two hours, you sleep for four hours. I can't go until there is a car that moves me around. You have to be careful. I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. Jesus himself said it. For the night cometh. Even for Jesus, where no man can walk again. There are people today who had an opportunity to have built estates and built buildings that they and their children and their children's children will eat from. But selfishness and distraction did not allow them to know they were getting old. Lo and behold, they opened their eyes and now they are 60, 70 years and not even a single building of residence. I'm not being sarcastic, forgive me. But I have to teach this. And many of us young people, we spent our lives criticizing men of God, criticizing parents, criticizing politicians, forgetting that we are also coming to that same stage. Many of us are right here and we are messing up even more than those that we criticize. Because the time it takes to prepare is the same time it takes to criticize. While you are criticizing and talking about others, time is still moving you forward. Prepared or not, one day the curtain will be opened. Is God speaking to us now? The year of legacy and the final stage of your life, the last 75 years, is called the stage of rest. Not death, rest. If you started this journey completely, at 75, 
you should almost be ready to finish your assignment, only consolidating and blessing the name of the Lord. There are few people who were able to demonstrate that in their lifetime. One of them was Billy Graham, a man who finished his assignment and was still alive to turn back. Everyone knew that this man had finished his assignment. The mystery of Pharaoh's dream is a lesson for everybody alive that seasons are changing. Seasons are changing. Seasons of opportunity will come. Now let us look at Joseph's advice. I have to run. I wish I had time to walk this. Genesis 41, 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown ye all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to my watch shall all my people be ruled. Thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. He took his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. Now, you know that the season just changed for Joseph. Forget about the season for Egypt. Joseph's season just change. Yesterday you were a young man who would need to beg for water but God took you on the seasons for helping interpret seasons. Your own season too has changed. But Joseph, make sure you follow your own advice first because that law also applies to you. He took off his ring, put it on Joseph's hand, arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, put a gold chain about his neck. Our generation called this, I don't know what, the, I've arrived. That's it there. Ladies and gentlemen, that is that deceptive demon of arrival there. I have arrived. And he made him to ride on the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bowed the knee, and made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand. My goodness. Everybody say seasons. Ah, did Joseph know that one day his bones they would take out of Egypt? Look at a man who is receiving a public global commendation i am pharaoh and without you shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of egypt read on please and pharaoh he called zafnath pania and he gave him a wife asenath the daughter of potiphera the priest of on and joseph went out over all the land of egypt let's go to okay we'll read down to 49 and then we'll jump to 53, just to redeem time. Joseph was how old? Please talk to me. How old was Joseph? Why do you think the Bible would add his age? What do we need his age to do? To know the reality of seasons. He was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land, all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field, which was round about every city, he laid up in the same. Last verse and then we'll move to 53. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea. Very much until he left numbering for it was without number go to 53 and the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of egypt were ended seven years of plenty can end 
seven years of plenty can end. Seven years of plenty can end. Next verse. And the seven years of death began to come according as Joseph had said. And the death was in all the land and in all the land of Egypt. But in all the land of Egypt there was bread. Uh -huh. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried unto Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph. Go to the person who has the formula for connecting seasons. Go to that man. He's mastered how to preserve bread regardless season. Let me tell you this. When you see people whose results don't change and it looks like they are ever rising, it's not because this law does not happen. They have followed the advice of Jacob, of Joseph. Of Joseph. So even when there is famine, there is still rainy season in their life. And you are wondering, is this rainy season universal? No, they created their own Goshen out of Egypt. Are we together now? Yes. When the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light, it says it because there is an advantage of the wisdom of Joseph to the saints. So what was the advice of Joseph? Very quickly, because we have to pray. Is someone learning something? Mm. The advice of Joseph was save and invest. This is not in financial terms at all. Just pay attention. Save and invest. Save what? The first thing to save is time. Not things. You have not really saved if all you save are things. The Bible says, not as unwise, redeeming the time. The most precious commodity to save and to invest is time. Not things. Not money. If you lose time and you have money, you lost. Record it as a loss. If you gain things. Hallelujah. And so his advice was save 20% of those seasons. And begin to invest those seasons. For the days of that reality that happens to all men. You cannot stop the seasons. But you can shield and immune yourself. To a point that you and all who are connected to you. Will not even know that this To sustain impact and relevance. Based on Joseph's interpretation of Pharaoh's dream. I give you a few keys. Since he said what do you do? During these seasons of opportunity that happen to all, there are many of us who are in the heart of that season. Your seven fat cows, your seven fat plants, they are flourishing. But remember that seasons are passing. Let me give you a counsel from the word of God. Number one, the first thing we do with seasons of opportunity is that we use them to build capacity. Your first assignment during seasons of plenty, during seasons of abundance, during seasons of ease, is capacity. Second Kings chapter 4, when you read from verse 1 to 6, this was the story of the wife of the sons of the prophet. Remember, the, it took the union of the vessel and the oil for profits to come. Oil alone does not give profit. It is oil with plenty vessels that is equal to profit. If you have great oil and small vessel, you will still be poor. The woman had oil in her house, but the vessel was small. When you have seasons of opportunity, seasons of health, seasons of youthfulness, seasons where your destiny helpers are around, maximize those seasons to build capacity. Spiritual capacity intellectual capacity use these seasons to build capacity are we learning so that's the first thing we do with seasons of opportunity number one build capacity your prayer life your word life your time with god 
Because you see, there are responsibilities that leadership of all sorts will bring into your life that may not allow you the convenience to do certain things with the liberty you had to do before again. Hallelujah. Number two. What do you do with these seasons? The seven, your seven years of abundance, your seven years of fatness. The second thing you do is build quality relationships. Build quality relationships. That's what we do with these seasons. Build quality relationships. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, please. Let's hurry up. We'll read from verse 9, 9 to 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Build relationships. Here's what the Bible says. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. So the two people must not be lazy. The Bible says two of them have labor. Is that true? It says, for if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. Uh -huh. Again, if two lie together, they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Twelve. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. Can I tell you, during your seasons of plenty, your seven years of plenty, that is the time to pray in the spirit and say, Lord, bring destiny relationships to my life. Bring quality people who love me because of me. Quality people who are not just looking for money or titles. Our world is full of people who will prey on you and climb you like ladders to where they want to go. You need quality people. Can I tell you this? Woe betides a man who is full of men but does not have relationships. How many people today have stepped into their dark days and their dark moments and there's almost no one look at jesus your jesus my jesus when jesus was on his way to god got a question where were all the people who received miracles from his crusade those who had five thousand um, um, um five loaf and two fish where were they where were all the women who were singing his praises hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord where were even his disciples they ran away. Paul so ran away. Paul called a small girl woman because he was running away from Jesus. I mean Peter. Peter. You look like you have no, 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 no. I've not been with him. It was only John that stayed when Jesus was on the cross. Do not let circumstances choose your relationships. Choose your relationships with understanding. Sit down with the word and with the spirit of wisdom and ask yourself, what kind of destiny do I desire? Ah, woe betides any man when you are in moments. I've taught you this about relationships. That's why in dark days and seasons in your life and there is nobody to call you to say, I hear you just lost this election. But we are standing by you. We love you genuinely. I hear you just lost money. One billion naira just disappeared. Can I tell you, if you need food, provided I am alive, your children will not beg for food. I will keep paying their school fees till you recover. Can I tell you, not everybody is greedy. There are sincere people. They, they are hard to find, but pay the price to find them. Let me ask you an honest question. The first time I taught this message, I asked that question and I want to ask it now. Is there someone right now, as you're looking at me, is there someone in your life you can honestly call for help no matter what time of the day or night and they will get up and respond to you? If you don't have such a person, your life is in danger now. I am telling you. Apostle, I am, uh, what they call that thing? Where people like you... Um, they like you, uh, oh dear, I can't remember it now. No, no, it's not photogenic. Photogenic is camera. Yes. Yes. Psychophants. I, there's something in me that makes everybody like me. Think again. Let me tell you. Think again. 
Men are selfish. When you look like a ladder, you will see many of them. Let them just see you looking like a ladder. And here they come, ready to climb messlessly. There are many of us here right now. The reason why you are almost dying of depression is because there is nobody in your life who can stand and say, let's pray. I came to spend the whole weekend with you because I hear you were bereaved. I canceled all my programs. And you say, why did you do that? Because of love. To let you know there are still genuine people. Genuine people are scarce. They are like gold. Pay the price to find them early. Is someone learning now? I tell you, if you have the wealth of men, genuine men who love Jesus and love you, you are wealthy indeed. Yes. There are people today who may not have connections. They may not have educational qualifications. But God has honored them with the gift of men. They can call and say, please, I don't mean to insult you, but there is someone who is sick. And they say, for you, I'm on my way coming. Do you know your name can be a key or a padlock? Your lifetime is what decides it. There are people today who have changed their names because if they ever tell people they are carrying that surname, they'll say, which one? Mention the name again. That other one, where was he in 1971 to 1975? Oh, he walked with railway. Go out of my office. And you, you just refresh a painful wound. And something that was a key becomes a padlock. I forbid your name from becoming a padlock. Is someone learning tonight? Yes. Build relationships, powerful relationships. I may not have the school fees to pay for my child. And someone says, over my dead body, I remember what you did for me in 1981. And I vow that for as long as I'm alive, there are people who have gone to be with the Lord today, but they went to be with the Lord smiling because they saw people standing before them that they knew will make sure their children don't cry. And they say, I will live in peace because I know that someone will be there to defend me. There are people who, it's not the fear of death that makes them cry. It's the fact that they know that if, they, if, they, if their breath ceases today, they will shred their entire names and their families into pieces. Please like what I'm sharing. I'm teaching you by the Spirit. This is what we gain when we come to the house of God. So, all the people you are insulting in your office because you have money, all the people you are insulting around, for us young people who are insulting fathers, insulting everybody, I give you a, I don't know if it's a good or bad news, but it's a news, a serious news, that one day, one day, you will reap from that seed you are sowing. There are people today who are not supposed to have certain jobs. But just because they mentioned this, you know this man? Let me tell you. In so, 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 so years, and a job interview becomes a long story. And after you talk to the person, you say, by the way, where are you staying? He says, I honestly, as I'm, I just came to Abuja, I don't even know the name of the area where I am. And the person says, go and get him a place at my cost. And you see the person and say, I hope you are doing things correctly. He says, I'm reaping from the benefits of someone's relationship. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you treat people. One day the person you are looking down, you will open the door of an office and see him sitting down. And he will say, welcome, you can be seated because from here you are going to prison. Straight. Straight. Give him minerals. As soon as you are done, you are going to prison straight. I know we are laughing, but I hope we are hearing what God is saying. Because God is speaking. There are many people today who are surrounded by men and women who can help them. Can I tell you, when you find out that a man is close to many helpers 
and yet nobody is helping him. Don't be too quick to conclude that the helpers are bad people. Ask questions. What happened? What happened? Why are you surrounded by people who can open doors for you and yet everyone ignores you? Could it be that you are reaping the harvest of the seeds you so gallantly sowed? I made up my mind that I do not want in my lifetime let it never be that one day you mention Joshua Selman and someone says, no, I intended blessing you but now that you have mentioned this name, walk out of here. Politicians, one day you will not be in that office. Men of God, whether Jesus comes or you meet him, in any case you are going to move. That for sure. Father, mother, the baby you now treat anyhow will be the one to take care of you in old age when seasons change. Young boy, learn to be responsible now. They will not give you money any, every day. A day will come, your father will say, at your age, I was already out. Go out of my house now. And prove, make full proof of your ministry. Maximize relationships. Are we learning? So I, I, I asked a question. That was what led me into this discussion. Is there somebody in your life today who you can call and he can stand with you in prayer? Is there someone in your life today who you can open the secrets of your destiny and still go back and sleep with two eyes closed? That you can tell the person, our family is going through an attack now. And the person says, over my dead body, as for me and my, my wife and my children, be sure that we are awake praying for you. We will pray till breakthrough comes. They will pray as if it's their own child that is going to hell. Do you have such people in your life? Woe betides a man who is alone when these seasons come. The Bible, the Bible gives us a very interesting rendition. There's no time for that now to, to check that. But you would have read about a man in scripture who heard that his boss was going to drive him away. When he heard that his boss would drive him away, he called all the people who were owing the boss. How much do you owe? Let me reduce something. M note my face. Note my face. And when the boss drove him, he called them and said, Where are you people? I scratched your back yesterday. Oh, yeah. My back is scratching me now. <laughs> Even though the reason for relationship should not be selfishness. It should be that you love them genuinely. You have to go and pray this night. And say, Lord, give me the gift of destiny covenant friends. I'm tired of general relationships. Oh, really? You don't have a child? Two years, no child? I'm fasting and praying with you. We are getting into this together. No, no, don't worry. I'll handle my... No way. When people love you just because of money or anointing or position, and most people will, that's the, that will be the basis. Can I tell you this? When people are clapping for you before you receive it, look well. Who is clapping? Because some people are clapping for themselves through you. Oh, I'm happy that my money bank is still alive. You are healthy. Are you okay? Because I'm about to ask you for school fees. There is a building project that is going on. I can get you Panadol. I can sow a seed. Are you alright? What they are saying is my project, my fundraiser, are you alive? The day they roof that house, if you like, die on that day. And many of us need to be discerning. Because just because people laugh and celebrate you, you draw them to the holy of holies of your destiny. No. Put a strict spiritual immigration officer around your life. That before you move from outer court to inner court, you must pass that test indeed. From inner court to the most holy place. Just because you meet someone and the person loves you, I said, my God, Apostle Joshua Selman, you preach so powerfully. In five minutes, you've told them everything about your life. Just to let you know that, in fact, my mother is a witch. It's an issue we are still dealing with now. Who asked you? Look at just five minutes. 
And I'm, are you aware that that shoe I even wore, I, I borrowed it? Come. In fact, let's sit down. And for five hours, you are by the side of your bed discussing things. And the person laughs until two, two weeks later, you find out that the person was actually looking for your enemy. It's just that he came to you. And now you open up several things about your life to your peril. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Let people qualify for access to your destiny. Don't open up the gates of your destiny to just everybody. Love everybody, but don't relate with everybody. No. Association is not by force. Choose it with respect to God's agenda and your destiny. Are we together? And beware of people who want to be your friends without changing their values. Be careful. If you come to my house and the protocol is to take off your shoes, you take off your shoes. You see that? There are people who want to come with their shoes and sit. This is just a parable, not doesn't mean literally. If I come to your life and I find out that your priority is Jesus, I must honor Jesus and it must remain so. I cannot want to create an exemption and yet want to be close to you. It doesn't work that way. Beware of people who do not respect your values and yet want relationships with you. They may be sincere, but they are dangerous people. So number one, what do you do with seasons of abundance? Build capacity. Number two, build relationships. Number three, what do you do during these seasons? Selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives. The third thing you do with these seasons of opportunity, your seven years, selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives. We see this in the life of David. We're about to pray. First Samuel chapter 22 from verse 1 and 2, please. First Samuel chapter 22 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went there to meet him. This was when David was running away from Saul. Look at the caliber of people who came to David. And everyone that was in distress... And everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, they gathered themselves unto him, and he became captain over them. And they were with him, about 400 men. Can you imagine the level of selflessness it takes to be captain over these people? You, are, you can't expect anything in return from these people. People who were distressed, people who were in debt, People who were already disenfranchised and now he became captain over them. By the time we get to 2 Samuel chapter 23. 2 Samuel please, chapter 23. From verse 8. 2 Samuel 23 from verse 8. Their names are changed. They were no longer weak men. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. David turned weak men who were in distress, weak men who were almost in debt, and he transformed them by selflessly investing in them until their names changed to the mighty men that David had. The Tagmonite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains, watch this. It says the same was Adino, the Esnite. He lifted up his fare against 800 whom he slew one time. What mighty man. Next verse please. And after him was Eleazar the son of Dodo, the Ahohite. One of the three mighty men with David. When they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. Next verse please. The Bible says he arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave to his sword. And the Lord wrought great victory that day and the people returned after him only to the spoil. Watch this. Next verse please. And after him Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. He says, and the Philistines were gathered together on, onto a troop 
where was a piece of ground full of lentils and the people fled from the Philistines. We are reading to 17. Watch this. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines and the Lord gave him great victory. Remember who they were before. Look what David turned them to become. And three of the 30 chiefs went down and came to David in the harvest time in the cave of Adullam and the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in a hold and of the garrison of the Philistines in Bethlehem. And the Bible says David long and said, watch this, ah, it's good to raise men. David said, oh that I would drink of the pool of the waters of the well of Bethlehem which is at the gate. And those who he had raised said, what did you say? You said you are thirsty. You want water from Bethlehem. Watch this. And the mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, David said, you've killed too many people. What warriors? What did I make you become? Don't expect loyalty from anybody you did not invest in. Don't appear in people's future and claim a stake in their lives. There are many people today who have not invested in building anybody. You just gather successful people and you want to claim their lives. No, sir. If you were there during their dark days, they will remember you in glory. There are politicians who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. There are men of God who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. There are parents who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. May you get it right. Every opportunity God gives you, invest in someone. Some of them will ignore you. Some of them will turn back. Don't worry. You will always find faithful people. Say, we remember, we have pledged our loyalty. Just because you are thirsty, they will pull down with people of leadership. Visionary leaders do not maintain followers. They turn those leaders, those followers to leaders. And like Dr. Miles will say of blessed memory, they will now turn the leaders into agents of change. Can I tell you this? Do not allow a generation pass without having your investment represented there. Some of these children that many of you see and push them in a bid to look for Joshua Selman, they are the next apostles you are pushing. Mighty men. It is my passion that God will think for yourself. I'm raising you for myself. That's already selfishness. That you invest in people selflessly. Can I tell you this? They may ignore you for a while. But the reality of your investment will bring them. One day they will realize that not everybody is that selfless. For someone you can start with your children. There are many people or bad. They land them outside. So those they are close to are those who fed them, intellectually and spiritually and otherwise. Can I tell you this? No matter how anointed I am, no matter how blessed I am, if I go to someone today in the generation of our fathers like Baba Deboe, even if I remove a human head and fix it back as a miracle, they will thank me, but they will be on their way to redemption camp. Because that is the voice that grew with them. The key to transgenerational relevance is don't just impact a generation. Grow with that generation. Grow with that generation. Laboriously invest in the people. They may not reward you, but invest sincerely. A day will come when the presidents of nations will be people who are fruits of your apostleship. Impact them sincerely and watch them grow. Their honor and their lifting is what will keep you up. God does not throw people. He lifts people. Everything lifted is lifted because it is connected to the ground. No matter how high a skyscraper is, it does not float. Anything that floats in the air will come down. Number one, build capacity. Number two, build strategic destiny relationships. Number three, selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives 
Apostle boy, you are just talking. You don't know how many children are brought to my house to raise. Almost 90% of them have become ambrobas. Don't worry. You will reap what you sow, not where you sowed. You can sow in Nigeria and reap in US. It's still your harvest. One child among the many who will do well will be equivalent to 100 children. Hallelujah. Invest in transforming as many. I heard a man of God say this. It is better to be kind than to be right. There are many times you will need to prefer kindness than being right. The pressure to prove you are right, it is nobler to pursue kindness. There are times you are wrong, but you are right, but you will still fail. Right does not always mean success. Right does not always mean victory. But kind will always mean victory. Hallelujah. Are we learning? The final thing and then we'll pray. Thank you for your patience. What do I do with my seasons of abundance? Study and carefully follow those who have maintained relevance through seasons. Study and carefully follow those who have maintained relevance through seasons. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. Did I give you a title for tonight's teaching? The law of seasons. You may want to write that down. The law of seasons. It says that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Every time I have the honor of speaking to any of our fathers or mentors or senior people, whether in ministry, in life, who have gone ahead of me, I don't approach them as Apostle Joshua Selman. I go there like a sponge, like an ignorant person ready to learn wisdom. And my goodness, sometimes in five minutes, they will tell you something that will define the next ten years of your life. Let me give you an advice. When you stand before greatness, don't contribute. Listen. When you stand, don't go and stand before people you know. They are all billionaires, respectfully speaking. You may not have anything yet. I'm very quick. You are, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's not First Bank. It's um, um, Access Bank. How much do you have? Just keep quiet, whether you are right or wrong. Listen and learn. You stand before senior fathers of faith. And they are, no, no, no. You made a mistake. It's Acts chapter 2. I just read it. Whenever you stand before greatness, minimize contribution. Be a listener. It is the secret of receiving from the great. Sometimes what they will say, they may fail in statistics, they may misquote scriptures, don't worry. Adaptation is proof of honor. Just endure. Be looking for what they are saying that can bless them. Mama, how were you able to raise 11 children and the least among them is a professor today? Mama may not be able to speak English. Endure. Just listen to what she's saying. There is a formula that through the frailty of our communication will drop to your hands. When you receive it, you can change your people. Can I tell you this? Every time results are consistent, it means they happen by laws. Consistent results are proof that you have gained mastery. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Lead us along eternal highway. We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter. What is the conclusion? Lamentation chapter 3 and verse 27. The Bible says it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. There is timing. Every time is not the most convenient time. Now listen to me. You see the reason why we pray for things like restoration and things like speed. Because by default, there are people whose seasons are 
already against you. But these systems of advantage come by the Spirit to help you remedy. Many of you right now, your seasons of glory are almost changing, but you did not build capacity. The time you should be spent praying, you were criticizing and talking about people. The time you should be fasting and building energy in the Spirit. Now they have made you the pastor of a parish. In two weeks, you have no messages again. Because the 10 years of preparation as an usher, the 10 years of preparation as a, a sanctuary keeper, it was not about sanctuary keeping. It was preparation. But you ignored it because your eye was looking at the stage. And the preparation that should happen within that season. There are many clerks today who are governors in disguise. But rather than learning, they are complaining. My boss is a greedy man. He gives everybody 10, 10 million. Men of God come and he gives them 50 million. I am here cleaning and God is saying you will remain a clerk there because of that evil heart. Someone can be cleaning and say, let me listen to the advice. When you become a governor, be a responsible person. And the clerk hears it and writes it down. And someday God says, you have passed the test. Hear me? Every time God gives you an opportunity to serve, he gave you an opportunity to learn. Don't waste it. You will not always be a student. One day, you will be a lecturer yourself. But make sure whilst you are a student, you look beyond the lecturer's limitations and learn what you need to learn. I thank God for today for the lessons and the privilege and the opportunities that he granted to learn. Some of the people who God used to teach me were harsh people. Some of the people who God used to teach me, were, I mean, they, it was as if they were mising the information. Can you endure so that you will learn and be built? There are many of you, you need to see a man of God, for instance. Maybe your pastor or someone. And five minutes you say, they are wasting my time. You put your hand in your pocket. What are you doing? Oh, I just started a walk and I just need a blessing or one or two words of advice. You won't rise that way. Already, that state qualifies you to remain like that. I aspire to be a politician. I hear that there are some senators around and let me just hear. You know, these men are even dull. They just read the election. They don't have anything to say. And God says, look at the kind of heart that wants to be governor one day. Can I tell you this? Learn to honor everyone ahead of you. They didn't get there by luck. Just because you don't understand how they got there. When you see consistent results, respect it. Even if the personal of the individuals is not inviting, endure. Some of them are your parents. Some of them are your loved ones. Endure. A woman who may have been, say for instance, a widow for 30 years, and yet none of her children has begged for bread. And you sit down with one child and you are struggling. And she says, can I advise you? Hey, Mama, you are old school. You don't know what to say. 30 years? You've heard me say it. I'm both old and new school. It depends on what you are talking about. Sometimes this idea of new school, old school is why people go down. It says, remove not the ancient landmark. Don't change what works. Are we together? Now, I tell you the truth by the God of heaven. The season you now are in, no matter what you think about it, that season will not remain like that. Your victory will remain, but seasons change. If you obey the advice of Joseph, O oh man of God, politician, man, woman, your season can always remain rainy and bright. But just because Egypt has food does not mean the whole world has food. It was one man's advice that kept them. To the point that even Jacob, although he was a prophet, hunger drove him to Egypt. Because even as a prophet, he was not discerning to know. There are parents today who can go to be with the Lord with joy. 
because they took advantage of the seasons before them and they built something worthwhile to the young you have time look for wisdom to the old you have wisdom please don't die with it let the young receive when god wants to help young men he takes the wisdom of the old and adds it to the time of the young that's how he blesses them apostle but i've made so many mistakes in my life and it looks like time is gone no time is not gone even if you are abraham god is able to make time be restored now you see the relevance of the statement and i will restore the years apostle i am now 45 years as a man of god i'm still learning the fundamental rudiments of me of ministry that i should have learned when i was 18 19. fear not the holy ghost can accelerate your journey apostle i just got born again when koinonia started where do i start from all my children are now teenagers how can i help them god can help you that's why he sent us we represent the past that you lost we have come as god's instrument of mercy apostle i lost 30 years and god says you have gained it back now you may not be able to do anything about yesterday but you can begin today to be intentional about your life intentional about everything you are doing some of you who are in ministry may need to take a break and go and settle down and learn how this thing works rather than shadow boxing and repeating mistakes and failures forever the moment you find out that your life is not producing consistent results do not be ashamed to stop what you are doing and learn some of you right now you are hearing me i'm speaking to you by the spirit do not be ashamed to go back to the school of the spirit and learn you still have time to learn apostle i'm a pastor god has called me to be a prophet but i don't know anything about the prophetic and i'm there misleading people find strength dear brother find strength dear sister there is still a way There are many of you who are crying because you have lost seasons. Can I tell you this? You may not be able to do anything about yesterday, but you can do something about today. There are some of you, whilst you are sitting right now, you should go back quickly and look for a further certification quickly because you have two more years left. Don't allow that door to close. Don't allow mediocres to flatter you and say you are all right. Remember your destiny is with kings. Joseph, you are only in the prison for a while. Don't get the prison life put you down. There are men and women of God who need to go for a retreat. All this exposure everywhere. I am a man of God. You need to go down and say, Lord, what is the next 10 years of ministry look like? Just because you were relevant yesterday does not mean you will be relevant tomorrow. There are politicians that need to go to God. Lord, show me the blueprint. What is Nigeria going to look like in the next 10 years? What are the secrets of relevance for the next season? And God says, I have told you, call on to me. Hear me, men of God. In the next 5, 10 years, the dynamics of ministry will not be the way it is right now. Sincerity will not be the only key you need. You need to hear the voice of His Majesty telling you this is going to be the way ministry will be like businessmen you may be doing well today but the next 10 years will not be the way it is now life is in circles you must master the circle of your season and then the moment you are in a season of greatness build capacity build relationships raise men follow the great i give you four unbeatable keys you walk with these keys by the spirit whether you are in your rainy or dry season, as for your victory, it will remain untouched. Please rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Let's minimize movement, please. We're almost done. Thank you for your patience. In one minute, I'd just like you to reflect on everything I've said. Outside, inside, following online, all through today's service.
the Lord has come with his word of power and word of grace, speaking wisdom to our hearts. The Bible says the laws of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. Have I wasted seasons in my life? Some of you are about ending a dry season now. You wasted the rainy season until the dry season revealed that you wasted it. I told you every dry season comes with a letter from the rainy season. I'm coming back. Some of you, God is about to give you another chance with life and destiny. Can you make up your mind? Oh, Samson, you lost your hair, you lost your eyes. But once again, the power is coming again. Make sure you do not make the mistake of yesterday. Turn your contemplation into a prayer right now. Lord, show me mercy and help me to maximize the seasons of my life, to maximize the seasons of my days. Is someone praying? Some of you, the seven lean cows, have eaten up the seven fat ones. But God is giving you another dream, O Pharaoh. God is giving you another dream. And he has sent his Joseph to give you the interpretation. O oh, king, the dream that you have seen is one. You saw it twice because it is established. Build capacity during your day. Build relationships during your day. Raise men during your day. Follow successful people in the kingdom. Follow those who have paid the price to, 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 to put a, 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 a track record of consistency. Please pray. Some of you may need to ask God for forgiveness and mercy. Lord, I repent for insulting the credibility and the track record and the, and the, and the consistency of those who have gone ahead of me. Now I am in their shoes and I see. Someone pray. Pray for these four keys in your life. Please pray them in one minute. Lord, I reject laziness. You may pray, I'm still a young man. Hard work does not kill. Diligence does not kill. I receive grace to burn the candles in the night. I receive grace to buy the books and study. I receive grace to submit to mentorship. I receive grace to be diligent, to build capacity. Is the oil and many vessels that equals profit. It is the oil and many vessels that equals profit. Even if the oil is genuine and the vessels are small, profit will not come. Pray. Lord, bring strategic destiny relationships to my life. Connect me to genuine destiny relationships. Relationships that build, that I will draw from in the days and the times of need. Can you pray for the grace to raise men? Lord, let me not only be a receiver, let me raise men, even if your children. Let there be someone today who can say, thank God I can eat because someone raised me. Thank God I am great. Are you praying? Don't waste your political office. Don't waste your office, dear man of God. It is not the cars you are buying. It is not just the anointing you have. It's not just the clothes you are wearing. The man you are raising is your real wealth. Hallelujah. Listen. I know many of you are crying. I want you to go back, listen to this message again. Everyone. Please just take it as a spiritual instruction. Go back, go back to YouTube. Listen to it. The law of seasons. And listen to it praying. And find the areas where you are already making mistakes. 
Because for every one of us here, the dream of Pharaoh must happen to you. You will have seven years of plenty. And you will have seven years where the lean cows will eat up the great ones. You will not always have that person give you money every week. Now that you are getting the money every week, make sure you save and begin to do something reasonable in your life. You will not always have a free access. People just give you access. One day, it will not be as easy as this. I remember years ago, I used to tell my beloved precious people in Zaria, they are following connecting by faith. And I used to tell them those days, my dear people, I love you with all my heart. Listen, one day you will not have it easy like this again. I used to draw me to say, now that you have the chance, ask the questions, learn, receive the impartations. Some paid attention, some didn't. Seasons have changed. When you make the same mistake twice, it means there is a deficiency of wisdom. When we make mistakes once, it's called our humanity. When we make mistakes twice, it's called lack of wisdom. For some of you, I'm about to pray. That's why I said no movement. There is a prayer I want to pray for you. This is where the power of God comes into place. Some of you, the clock has shifted. If you have to wait until it goes round, by the time it comes back, you may be 70 years. The prophetic is able to take it back again and say Lord give me another chance you gave me three men of God three millionaires godly siblings and I wasted that opportunity take the hands back again and give me a chance I will be wiser at this time you gave me someone who was willing to send me to Harvard to go and study and he said think about it as though they charmed him I wasted that season Right now, I'm even looking for money just to do a three-day course and I don't have it. Lord, would you send such helpers again? Now I am wiser. Lord, you brought all kinds of anointed men to my life. I wasted the opportunity with familiarity and dishonor. Can you please bring them again? One of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible is that an Adam knew his wife again. Again means another chance. Some of you here hear me. Our time is gone, but this will be one of the most powerful messages you would have heard. You were connected to great business partners, but you did not have the patience to learn. Rather than learning their values and their virtues, you were looking for money. All the discussions, today you would have been a very strong person. I'm sorry to say, please don't feel bad. There are people who had the opportunity to own lands in hectares in this Abuja. They were in this city where land was one million, five million. Till today, they don't have a plot. There are ministries that had opportunities to buy acres of land. Don't always say tomorrow is there. Remember the dream of Pharaoh. The mystery of Pharaoh's dream is both a warning and a roadmap. The ease you have today may not always be so until you program it through your obedience. I want to pray for you. I really came here tonight with a strong burden. I'm not, as, as I'm standing here, I tell you before the Lord, it's only God, is by the strength of the Lord I'm standing here. But it's the passion from my heart. Because I knew that necessity is laid upon me. If I do not teach this, some of you are in an injury time in your destiny right now. Just because nothing has happened yet does not mean nothing will happen. You can choose to correct it this night. Or you can sit and say, it does not matter. Nice preaching. Rema, preach preacher. And then the seasons will catch up with you. Apostle, I had an opportunity when I was put in an office. In that office, it exposed me to relationships. I insulted everybody. And I said, don't worry. Now the person who was sweeping outside is now the owner of a big real estate company somewhere. 
I cannot even go and tell him, help me, because I am ashamed. Believers, we must be wise. We do not have every time to live on earth. Treat people with caution. Treat people with courtesy. Treat people with honor. You may be a wealthy man. Someone may be around you wearing a shoe that looks like you just got it by the roadside. Don't look down on people because of this and that. Let me see how much do you have. Who is your father? Who is your mother? Be careful. The person who is great has already shown you his future. The one who is coming, you don't know how far he can become. This is why I feel sorry for people who tear down people and criticize. You must be careful. You hear that a family has lost a loved one. Don't start arguing and moving around. Rush there and say, how can I help? You hear that a pastor is in pain. Don't sit down and be assessing and talking nonsense. Rush there. Oh, a woman had a miscarriage. I've always told them, mm -mm. how can I help? How can I pray? Always be there at the point of people's pain. Sooner or later, you will forget what I've preached. But you will never forget the experience of this encounter. Edge yourself in the history of men's rising. Let them not forget you. Don't wait until people have arrived and you come and claim a stake in their destiny. They will not open the door for you like that. When you find hurting people, don't ignore them. If you cannot do anything, then keep quiet. But don't add to the hurt. Someone is trying to raise money for his house rent. And you are seeing him do his best. All these young boys. If you can help, help. If you cannot help, bid him Godspeed. And walk away. Do not let people remember you for evil. Has someone learned something today? Now that you know these things, the Bible says, happy are you if you do them. I pray for you. Please don't kneel, just stand. In the name that is above all names. For every season that you have not utilized well, seasons of opportunity your seven years that you may have wasted either as a result of ignorance as a result of mistakes i call upon the god of my covenant and in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god let there be restoration of seasons for you let there be restoration of seasons for you For many of you, strategic relationships, opportunities to have lifted you today. I call on my God who is your God. Let there be restoration. May God give you another opportunity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Some of you, the Lord is ministering to me. Please listen. There are some of you, some of your parents are still alive. You have never sent anything to them. It's just to complain. You are a millionaire and mama is there. Staying in a rented apartment, drinking water from the well. God is speaking to you. Whether you like it or not, one day they will not be there. Can you give them the memory of joy and glory before they go to be with the Lord? Can I tell you this? Use every opportunity you have now because it will not be there. The hymn writer says, Thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling. He says, Only remembered by what we have done. Thank God for cars, but cars will not go with you. Thank God for qualifications, but it will not go with you. Thank God for reputation. Apostle Joshua Selman, it does not go to the grave and it does not go to heaven nor hell. Find the things that matter in this life. And commit yourself. Invest in them. And the sons of Issachar. Men who had an understanding of the times. And they knew what Israel ought to do. Again I pray for you. Anybody who should be in your life in this season. But lack of discernment took them out of your life. I call upon the God of heaven. May they return back to your destiny now. Every opportunity you lost 
either due to ignorance or dishonor i pray for you may the god of all grace and all mercy may he restore those seasons for you now hear me for some of you you are at the threshing floor remember you are at a defining moment a few weeks ago i came with a prophetic word here that people were ending seasons and beginning another one can i tell you this the grace to maximize this season you are in now in the name of jesus christ receive the wisdom and the grace receive the wisdom and the grace receive the wisdom and the grace Man of God, there may be certain levels of the anointing you should have had by now. But because of carelessness, like the hair of Samson, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, you should have get, gotten into deeper levels of the prophetic. Deeper levels of revelation. Deeper levels of prayer. Deeper levels of fasting. But you lost these things. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Let there be restoration tonight. From beginning to the end, it will always be, always be you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. For Jesus. Jesus, you're the center, and everything revolves around you, Jesus. Listen, if you really want God to honor you, the key is to forget about the deceitfulness of vain glory. The deceit that fame and popularity can bring. Does God want you famous? Oh yes. But the key is not to seek it. The key is to seek that Christ alone directly be glorified. And God will surprise you beyond your imagination. I watch with a lot of shock the way we pressure ourselves looking for fame looking for names it's led audience to all kinds of things pastors we want crowds like this this is the ambition of many people so that i'll tell you where we got that thinking from it's very sincere but it's wrong we came from backgrounds cultural backgrounds territorial backgrounds where we have been faced with this competitive spirit are we together of trying to prove to our contemporaries our loved ones those in our environments that we are successful so um uh, in a in a very sincere attempt to be great we have found ourselves under pressure not to glorify christ but to prove to everyone around us that we are not failures are we together now it has led us into what the Bible calls vain glory. The pursuit for mundane things. So Lord, I want money so that by the time I dress well or have a car and a house, everybody will know that I'm not a failure. Do you know one of the ways Satan deceives people is to try to tell you he will give you what God has already given you. So he makes you go around trying to do everything. There are many young people. We want to be rich. Why? So that in-laws and people will not think that you are, a, you are a non-entity. And it has driven us to all kinds of stupid things. There are all kinds of people telling lies, wanting to show that we are great people. And so you tell a lie, you know my father is in the US for some reasons he can't come into the country whereas your father is an iron bender somewhere. You are not proud of him because you think that by saying my father is this and that you will not be seen as being successful. From beginning to the end it will always be, always be you Jesus. Oh, Jesus.
Jesus. Listen. Anything in your life that does not glorify God directly, I'm telling you today, is a waste. I don't care what it is. Money, fame, children, marriage, prestige, accolades, whatever it is. Because the Bible says, what shall it profit a man? He uses a business terminology. What shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? He's not endorsing poverty. He's not endorsing failure. He's only saying that all of these things are only tools that you use and men will see Jesus Christ directly glorified in your life. I shared with you my experience with God. Many years ago, the Lord told me this. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That's what the Lord said. Not if you look for fame and a name. No. God is my witness. My passion and my obsession is not to be a man of God and make a name and prove that I'm a successful person. No, far be it from me. I have one desire. Our heart and our desire is to see the nations worship our cry and our prayer Is to sing your praise to the ends of the earth that we mighty voice every tribe and tongue rejoices our heart. Our prayer. This is what this is all about. Is to see the nations worship you. Your kingdom reigns. Yes, it reigns through my life. Yes, it rains above all, above all. Listen, in my life, here and now, your kingdom reigns, your kingdom reigns, Lord. In my life oh God in my life let me not live my life in a waste building empires that have no integrity your kingdom reign in my life my heard me teach it again and again Anna wanted a child but her purpose of wanting a child was to end the mockery of Penina are we together now the Bible says they were the two wives of Elkanah and many times Penina would mock Hannah because she was barren and Hannah went to God but her motive was never aligned to the kingdom she wanted to use her ability to give birth to prove that she was a woman indeed. And God said, it's not enough reason for me to give you a child. You may want a child. I cannot let you bring a destiny just to prove a point. What then happens when the point has been proven? 
Oh God, give me a jeep to shame my enemies. God said, it's too small a reason for me to bless you. Make me a millionaire to silence the mouth of wicked men. God says, it's still too small. A time came, Anna said, Lord, I realize I've been selfish. Here is a new proposal. You need a prophet. Can my womb birth that man child? And God said, deal, done. Once she prayed, once she prayed, and a prophet came. I'll tell you the reason why God does not do business with us. We use God, hear me please, the Holy Ghost is speaking. We use God as a ladder to come out of shame, to come out of pain, to come out of inferiority. Lord, I want anointing. He says, why? He said, my contemporaries need to know your hand is upon my life. God says, you are joking. You will never, never carry two grace. Lord, I want to get married. Why? Because I, I want to get out of the stigma of singleness. God said, my purpose for marriage is bigger than that. Lord, I want to be a millionaire. Why? There is a brother I need to prove wrong. Your life is too long to live just to prove a point. And God says, when I look at your life, I don't see your obsession for my agenda. There is nothing eternal in the motivations of your pursuit. Are we together? I told God something. Anything you give me, and I'm saying it now, I don't care what it is. If you cannot find where you'll be glorified through it, may it never come to my life. I don't care what it is. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something. The Lord Jesus is not a fool. He's not a stupid person. You don't come to him praying, rattling in tongues, Whereas in your heart, God already knows that if I give this man one million, I will never get his attention again. Again. God has done it before. There are people he opened up doors for and he watched. His intention was to bless you more than that. But the little he gave, he kept watching. And right now our lives are Ichabod, the departure of the glory. Hallelujah. If there is any message I want you to get today, this is not a message for men of God. It's a message for those who want to be used mightily by God. There are so many things God wants to do with us. But you must get to that point of obsession where first, your love for God, please listen, listen, I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, until your love for God supersedes your desires, you will never find the hand of God in your life. Lord, I hate poverty. And since I found out in the Bible that coming close to you will make me rich, I now come close to you as a means to an end. You will never be prosperous that way. Hallelujah. Listen, I speak especially to us the young people. Don't allow what is happening in society fool you. You are not the first to live your life. You are not the first to be blessed or to be prosperous or to pursue success. There is no true success outside of Christ. Not just going to church and trying to be nice. Seriousness. Sisters, I've challenged you. Don't marry anybody that is not serious with God. With traceable transformation. No matter what he tells you. He can have all the jeeps, all the whatever it is. But any man that has passion for the things of the Lord. You know, our society has a, a very insulting way of trivializing godliness. Right? No matter what else you have. If you don't have God, it's a waste. But our society has taken it the other way around. If you have God, no matter what else you don't have, they think you are not successful. This is how much he means to us. Why should I keep what people say? For they don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. I love you. I can never ever do without you. I love you. 
I can never ever do without you. I love you. I love you. I can never ever do without you. Listen. Get to a point in your life where your entire desire is to see him lifted. If God makes you a millionaire businessman, you are a minister in business, not a Sunday Christian doing every other thing. Where when God empowers you, it is for his kingdom. Are we together? If God gives you intellectual prowess, it's for his kingdom. He gives you beauty for his kingdom. Thank you, sir. He gives you money. It's for his kingdom. He gives you influence. It's for his kingdom. Listen, if God knows you will not withhold his glory, he will not withhold his hand from you too. I am amazed. I am amazed to see the little that God has been able to do through my life. You know, <laughs> When I see it, people send me all kinds of texts. Man of God, apostle of our generation. And I just look at the text and laugh. For you are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God. I'm not interested in anything in this life that I cannot find how it will glorify God. If you cannot show me how it will glorify God, I'm not interested. I don't care what it is. You must get to that point where your life, you donate your life to be a promoter of his interest. Anywhere you get to, you find out, Lord, how are you going to be lifted here? He said, if I... If your life is committed to lifting me, there is nothing I will not give you. If your life is committed to lifting me, I will take you beyond every territorial background. Ah! It was, it was Nathaniel that said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Try donating your life to God and see the wonder he will make out of your life. My life is a wonder. My mom called, okay, well, she didn't call, but she sent me a text. Oh, by the way, my mom said she's praying for everyone and that your prayers will be answered throughout this fasting period. My mom is a very anointed woman. Anointed indeed. She's been following in the fasting. Praying also. She was listening to the message. I think it was yesterday's message and she was just weeping. And I told her, you've not seen anything yet. If you think you are a failure in life, you succeeded in giving birth to me. And that's enough reason to be a success forever. Koinonia, come to a point tonight where Jesus becomes the focal point, the pivot of your life. Listen, there is no such thing as church life and then real life. You know people do that. This is church. They say, look, look, when in Rome, behave like the Romans do. It's not in your Bible. You have to be careful. I'm a child of God anywhere. Right? So you pick up your phone and you put a, a gospel song. And when it is ringing in a business meeting, you quickly off it. So that it doesn't embarrass you because you want to be neutral. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men. Please hear me, Koinonia. If you are ashamed of me before men. He said, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. My appetite and my addiction for God, I don't know what he did to me. I've been captured by a love I can't explain. Now you have me and I'm forever changed. I've abandoned everything I've ever known. Now I surrender this life is not my own. I belong to you. I belong to you. 
that point that's the first thing i want you to learn come to a point where you are not just born again but you are addicted so you see a pretty lady like this and it's easy to believe that because she's fine my dear if your beauty if god cannot see how your beauty directly glorifies him is nonsense is useless as far as the agenda of god is concerned are we together everything not just your education everything that constitutes an advantage in your life must have a direct bearing if you do this i show you the secret of unbeatable greatness god will bring you out of bless you my dear every storm and put you in a position of notoriety because he knows that your being there is for his namesake is god blessing us tonight one of the things we are going to be crying as we round up this period, awesome period of fasting and prayer. I was talking to the Lord yesterday. I said, Lord, look at what you have done with your child. So many people say all kinds of things. During my birthday, I was so honored last year. We had delegates from over 16 nations calling in to say, look, this is what your teachings are doing, changing people. That's what God can do. When you believe him when you really love god you will not have time for pride and arrogance it's not the issue of i want to be i'm stopping it there is a revelation that threatens you to humility at all times all times it's a revelation that's why i run away from all these kinds of things because i've seen the deceitfulness of man he will celebrate you and stab you when you fall people can clap you into death so every time they clap, God says, remember you are an usher. Remember our prayer and fasting. And so you lead them and say, there is one who is mightier than I and I'm not embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed to know that I am not here for myself. Listen, this is what Jesus said. I can of my own do nothing. The word of God speaking so helpless, I can of my own do nothing. Brothers and sisters, everything you see behind this small life that you see is a product of God's grace is the reward of addiction to the kingdom it's not so much my wisdom the Bible says let the wise man not glory in his wisdom right let the strong man not glory in his strength they say but let him that glory yet glory in this many years ago the Lord told me my only promise to you is my presence God never promised me a car he never promised me fame he never promised me crowd all he promised me was his presence and he has kept that promise if nothing else works in my life i cannot blame god the promise he made was his presence and moses said if your presence go not with us he said we will not depart from here for how shall they know that we are a separate people the presence of god is the mystery behind the magnificent things god is doing in and through this ministry and tonight i'll share two more things and then we are going to pray and say lord i not only give you my heart i give you my life there is a big difference between giving god your heart and giving god your life we used to sing a song remember my lifetime i will give god my lifetime don't play it it says when Abi, if i give god my lifetime he will take care of me now that song is not a good bargain for many people because they said, Lord, I gave you my lifetime. And I saw the way you shredded me into pieces. We have this idea that when we walk to, with God, we will be cheated. No. No. Godliness is profitable. Having the reward here in this life and in the life to come. Number two. The second thing that I want to challenge us is to have a passion for understanding. Please say after me, understanding. Those outside, are you with us? Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Understanding. The Bible says, in all thy getting, get understanding. 
understanding tells you the dynamics on how a thing works listen a Jimmy's wife made this beautiful cake I know the ingredients to make a cake but I don't understand how it works at least I know that you need flour you need egg you need uh, uh, all the other things are we together but she understands how to work if you want to make fried rice I may know how to make fried rice but I'm not sure I understand it I know in that fried rice there should be rice there should be liver my friend is helping me there should be liver carrots now listen but do I know how much of liver no do I know when to put the liver no if you give me all those ingredients let me tell you what I'll do I will mix everything at once and close it and the next time I open that pot I'm lifting it I don't cook I don't cook it's not my ministry that's the reason why I'm determined to be successful because I know that when I'm successful that lapse will be covered in the name of Jesus Christ all right but let, let's get back to our point understanding listen we know many things but we do not know how to combine them to be successful you know there is a place of destiny help us you know there is a place of fasting and prayer are we together you know there is a place of warfare you know there is a place of giving and sacrifice but do you know how to combine them to produce an unbeatable life we need to pray for understanding it's not everything that is just the blood of Jesus it's not everything that is just prayer for instance finances is not just the issue of prayer prayer gives you wisdom finances is a covenant it's an understanding right he said thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee the power the anointing the unction to prosper there is such a thing the Bible says and I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places you know that what it takes to do ministry there is a place for leadership and organization there is a place for the anointing right there is a place for people's skills there is a place for endurance and persistence there is a place for for um, competence in the world but do you know how to combine them together many of us right now our problem is not ignorance our problem is understanding of the operation of the systems of the kingdom how to make things work is really revelation not that you are aware knowing what God has said is not revelation knowing how to make it produce results in your life consistent results is understanding tell your neighbor get understanding this is what we have been doing we've been praying and fasting and we have been taking a thought a dimension of the keys of the kingdom just approaching it the place of power the place of destiny help us the place of favor you must passionately pray and ask the Lord to give it to you as a personal revelation Lord show me if you were to draw a pie chart for me how much percentage of my life should be dedicated in building relationships how many should be dedicated in the place of knowledge how much should be dedicated in warfare? There are people who all they do in their life is to fight warfare. They fight warfare until they are frustrated. They hold night vigils every day. You see, they have stretched the truth beyond its limit of operation. The truths in the kingdom are dimensional. It only profits you when you apply the kingdom uh, within the confines of its relevance. That it is truth does not mean it's applicable anyhow. You must define the boundaries to which its application becomes relevant. Are we together? There is a place tithing and giving holds in kingdom wealth. But it's not just tithing and giving alone. Are we together now? Yeah. If all you do is tithe and give, favor will come. But you do not have wisdom. A house is not built by favor. Through wisdom, 
a house is built and by understanding it is established he said through knowledge the rooms are filled with every treasure so we need to know how to combine the correct ingredients and you will make for an unbeatable life number three maybe i'll just say that and then i'll stop there number three i have emphasized it again and again the bible says for as he thinketh in his heart so is he listen there is the place of your mentality your mindset your paradigm mindsets are conditioning mindsets are perspectives mindsets are opinions mindsets are constructions planes perspectives of judgment the bible says in philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 let this mind there was an understanding there was a a mental state that jesus was in that's why he succeeded and the bible says permit it to be in you in the same way it was with Jesus Christ. When God called Abraham, he was a man who was in a place called Ai of the Chaldeans. He was an idol worshiper. And based on his mindset and understanding, there were certain things that were impossible. And God needed to stretch his mind. Look at me, please. You can get my message pulling down strongholds. I have seen as a leader, as a man of God, how many great people potentially have been limited because they cannot tear that mental barrier to give them space to be used by God. Scattered among us here are all kinds of people. Hallelujah. Please, I need two people here. Where is promise? Where is Charles? Charles Protocol. Can you come? Please, quickly. Hallelujah. I want to use them as an example. Wherever he is, if he's within reach, let him come. I want to use him as an example. If your mindset does not change, your life cannot move forward. Please, this is not some psychology, sociological reality. Unfortunately, we come from backgrounds where there are conditionings over our minds. There are people, for instance, who have been taught, listen, there are people who have been taught that you will never succeed. You will never amount to anything. You came from a background where everybody was a failure. And that conditioning has been there. I am a failure. I don't expect to succeed. I don't expect things to work for me. Do you know the Bible says in Psalms, I think 78, 41 or so, it says they limited him in the wilderness. Hallelujah. I want to use these two gentlemen. Please don't be offended. I've used them again and again because they are great people. Where is Francis? Can you join him, please? Francis, your friend. Where is he? Come, 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 quickly. Appreciate him. Do you mind if I share your testimony again? <laughs> Look what he's doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I spoke to you about this guy. He came to Zaria with dreadlocks dreadlocks and earrings that's how he came into the city can you imagine this is the assistant head of prayer, de the prayer, the prayer department yeah i'll tell you why believe me he was not a bad boy he was a victim of an understanding because he probably grew up in an environment and where he was schooling before the occult groups taught that if you were a capon right then they associated violence and rebellion with greatness. Listen, life is always proposing an ideology to you about a true definition of success. And you must return to the word of God and re-edit your template, your value system. Look at his life right now. A testament of a transformed mind. Let me tell you a very funny story. Thank you, sir. This gentleman, you mind if I share your testimony? Now, let me tell you how he came to this ministry. He saw a lady that he liked. He was an occultist. Came all the way from another state. Listen. Oh, he's very born again, I can tell you. Born again and successful. And wealthy as a matter of fact. Hallelujah. He saw a lady 
one of my ladies and saw her and said ah you know all these occultic things and so on and so forth and as he followed her she gladly led him just keep coming he was like a sheep to the slaughter not knowing what was going to happen to him listen that's beauty used for the kingdom i'm not saying you go to a beer parlor and tell somebody follow me god did not send you there let me balance it up front because i can't assume in our generation today you must explain everything everything praise the lord and this is what happened it was you that brought him right now this guy came that night he got born again filled with the holy spirit transformed completely that night his friends gave him seven days to return back to his lifestyle seven days have become over six or seven years or thereabout never to return again he was so impacted he went and dragged this one and said just come are we together now i'm not sure this guy had an idea what was going to happen to him and he dragged him and brought him let me tell you what happens in this place you are first saved and the next mission is your mental transformation until your ideology is changed you are not really born again believe me when i tell you this see what God has made. They are serving in the body doing great things for the kingdom. These are the guys responsible for your bosses. They have a direct did you know he could not speak Hausa but he speaks Hausa right now because he had to learn it so that he will be effective as the, as the boss coordinator. Can you imagine that? That's passion for the kingdom and I pray guys may God bless you. I love you with all my heart. May God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Who is your life changing? From the time they came into your life, have their understandings changed? Now you see, we, we, that you are well-meaning does not mean you are transformed. Separate being nice societally. I don't steal, I don't kill, I don't fornicate. It's not the same as transformation. Transformation is the process that makes you like Christ. And it is not a gift, it's a reward. You will labor to get into that state transformation requires admitting that something about your thinking is destroying your life there are people who are born again but they are greedy there are people who are born again but they are angry i counsel a lot of people and sometimes you see couples i remember one couple very interesting uh, i mean and they had been married for a while not just two years five years and they fought. They fought police had to come and stop them. So two of them said they were coming to report themselves and they booked for counseling. Husband and wife. Two of them sat down. Madam, what's the problem? This man does not respect me. And she was just landing it and the man kept quiet. When I finished, said, man of God, you are seeing what made me beat this woman. And the truth is both of them loved themselves. But everybody was coming with the idea of his territory. Somebody told that guy, when you beat your wife, she will respect you. Are you getting that information? He stored it in his pocket. Somebody told the lady, if you are weak to a man, he will disrespect you. If he punches you, you roll your hand and punch him back. So listen, all of them are executing their ideologies. There are pastors who believe, their thinking is that if you want to be rich, be a pastor. Because you will receive prophet's offering, etc. You see that? So their ideology led them to fast for 40 days they created names they created protocol are we together now very important listen let this mind that i have labored and i still do with all my heart i don't trust myself outside of the word of god i don't even know what i can become i started a project years ago not a project to become a preacher because when i contrasted the word of god to my mindset i was i was messed up in almost everything my understanding of leadership, my understanding of ministry, my understanding of almost everything. The pastors that trained me did not teach me prosperity was a blessing from God. They sang songs like, take the world and give me Jesus. No, no, I won't sing that song at all. I, my heart is to God, but I realize that prosperity is an important tool in kingdom building. And I will never mislead you. I'm not apologetic about it. Poverty and prosperity, which one is better? 
Don't let a poor man who has never been blessed carry his stumbling block and come to you and tell you, you see how simple my life is. You are, if you are healed, you are healed for yourself. If you are saved, you are saved for yourself. Only prosperity is shareable. That's why Satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church. The gospel is free, but the means to carry it to the lost is not free. Are we together now? Yeah. Your mindset, something about your village, something about the thinking, your upbringing. There are ladies here, for instance, our mothers, though well-meaning and sincere, have taught us that when you want to get money from a man, do A, B, C. Men are very stupid people. This is how to collect money from them. You are born again, you pray in tongues, but that mindset is still in you. Are we together? There are people who still do what I call traditional Christianity. They love God, but when the going gets tough, they call you and say, come home. And you know what that means. Come home means revisit your roots. And you go back and they give you your husband in a bottle. They carve clay and put it inside and say, for as long as you are holding this bottle, this is your husband. Do with him as you please. I have counseled people who brought charms. I mean, they removed it and said, man of God, I won't lie to you. This is it. I said, what is this for? Say for money. And I said, but you don't look rich. Meaning it's not working. <laughs> oh, or this one is for, um, I, I remember counseling some ladies. Now, this is not to condemn you. True story. They may even be here. Don't feel offended. Some ladies who said they, they went, was it Zaria City to collect something? True story. Something like a powder or something. You, you rub, it. I don't know if it's the, you rub it or bath with it. And any man that sees you, no matter what is, except he's really born again, indeed, with a track record in the spirit, otherwise he will follow you like a sheep. And I looked at them. I said, you mean this is what you are doing to yourself? Something in your mind is limiting your destiny right now. Hallelujah. I began a project to change my mind. There were some things I never saw growing up. I knew that if I needed to be a global leader, there was a thinking. Africa teaches us to be mediocres and failures. Our mentality in Africa is comparing with our, ourselves with ourselves. They say, I'm a family of seven people. And right now, I'm the first person to buy a Pujo. And we keep making noise over it. Whereas God is saying, there are great things I want to do with you. Please, that mindset must die tonight. There are even territories associated with certain levels of mediocrity. Have you heard people say that? Men from this place, they are irresponsible. Women from this place, they are, uh, uh, what, they, are, they are immoral. You can change that in the name of Jesus Christ. I know that the people from, from my village, the core people in the village, I grew up knowing that they used to drink. Drink seriously. Why? I don't know. But I reject that testimony. Count me out. I'm not part of it. Are we together now? Don't say because I grew up seeing it happen. You grew up seeing people oppress people to be blessed. But you're going to change and say no. My mind has changed. My mind has changed. Based on the power of the word of God. I found out that Jesus was not the Jesus that was taught in the Bible. The Jesus pastors preached as a wicked cruel God out to kill and destroy people but my Bible says it is the thief that comes to steal and kill and to destroy I never give up on people no matter what has happened because the Bible says there is hope for a tree he said at the scent of water never give up on people we are going to pray but I'm challenging us especially with the young people there is a mindset we must change and the Bible says, by the truth, by the truth, something about your conditioning will make you fail in life if you don't change it. Something about your understanding may make you a bad father, a bad mother. That you are well-meaning is not enough. You must have the mind of Christ. Please lay your hands on your head and say, in spite of the mindset of my culture, in spite of my background in spite of the limitations of nigeria and my territory 
I change my mindset. I declare that I come from a kingdom that is foreign to this earth. And I refuse to be limited in the name of Jesus. Years ago, when God was showing me the visions of the things that are happening today, I saw these things and they were great. And brothers and sisters, half of this have not even come to pass. What you see now is child's play. It's just one step out of the cave. Hallelujah. And God showed me these things. But he was waiting for me to agree with him. Please come, Ejimi. Listen. This is God saying, Ejimi, see how far. He said, as far as your eyes can see. But Ejimi is standing. Oh, I come from a background. I come from Ijebode. There is a limitation. There are all kinds of things. And God is saying, I can do so much with you. I can smash that barrier. You say, Lord, I went to school at 25. When my colleagues are doing masters, that's when I'm passing jam. And God is saying, no. Abraham started his ministry almost 75 years old. Are we together? Change your mindset. Change your mindset. Change your mentality. Change your understanding. I made up my mind. Listen. I made up my mind that there are things Africa will never limit in my life. There are things in my mind and beyond the spheres of this place. It's not pride. It's the truth. I didn't get it just by prayer. He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. There is a labor of knowledge. I've studied the largest churches in every continent. Studied them carefully. Forbes list of billionaires. I've studied all of them one by one. It's not just prayer. Please, I'm telling you, you must agree that something you know is limiting you. When it was time to set up Covenant University, Bishop Oyeniko sent delegates to comprehensively study Cambridge, Yale, Harvard, right? And, and which Oxford, I think these four or five top universities. And then he now added a kingdom dimension to their limitation and said this becomes a structure of our, our university. Koinonia is patterned after an understanding. There is somewhere we are going. We have seen that it's possible to combine the anointing with excellence. And we are striving to increase. That you, you should not choose one and leave the other. God wants to do great things with you. And today he's asking you, do you believe? I used to say it when we used to meet um, on the floor that time we did not even have math on the floor that we are all going to be great in this life and the beautiful part is that we will all know ourselves people of God there is more that God wants to do say there is more that God can do with my life I refuse to be a local champion say it I refuse to be a local champion Ejimi's wife had been making cakes long before she got married. She's been making cakes but she made up her mind that she wanted to be world class. And I got to find out that all her time in Lagos she had dedicated it. This is an economist. But because this was the area of her passion she started taking certifications UK based certifications and all kinds of certifications to be extraordinary. The fruit of it is what we are seeing today. Who is ready to pay you for your transformation? Have you been so developed that you become priceless? This can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. Prophesy to yourself, this can't be it. This can't be it. He is so much bigger than this so he's calling you deeper that's what he's saying deeper 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 he's calling you deeper deeper he's calling you deeper 
know why we are not celebrating koinonia now my concept of birthdays is not that you were born is that you are living now the purpose for being born i am personally convinced that nobody has a right to celebrate birthday until you know why you are on earth and your life is experientially blessing people a day will come we'll make noise about koinonia when we build the schools remember i told you about our schools my goodness bring your children to our schools yes we are adding three extra courses spiritual growth a course called koinonia and financial intelligence every student they will learn it from primary school <laughs> hallelujah yes part of spiritual growth will introduce a program called honesty morality and conscience we have a society that numbs conscience you kill somebody and say it does not matter the end justifies the means no sir a christian the process to the result is as important as the result when we launch the tv stations and we are doing great things we can turn and then pat our back now we we'll lie to ourselves because compared to where god is taking us it's a step out of the cave people are already clapping and i told god block my ears in jesus name block my ears you need to learn to challenge yourself raise standards don't say i'm better than somebody no that's a foolish way of progress the bible says and they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise we used to sing a song when we were preparing for our crusade ask and i'll give the nations to you listen if you wanted me to cry raise that song that was the song that brought tears from my eyes because every time they raised the song i saw nations the bible didn't say you are a village it said you are a city you may start from where you are but don't die where you are you started from zaria oh my father is a carpenter my mother was frying a car so what the bible says ask for the nations and i will give you i'm speaking to people here we're going to pray ask and i'll give the nations to you oh lord that's the cry of my heart distant shores and the islands we see your eyes as it rises on us one more time ask and i'll give the nations to you Oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Listen, you must challenge yourself to be exceptional. Listen, listen. Sandra just came in this evening. I was very touched when she came in. Something very remarkable happened. This lady you are seeing within three months has done three jobs. She works directly with the house of assembly. It's not about lobbying. It's the power of competence and the keys of the kingdom. It was their official card that brought her to Zaria. But people said there is no job. It depends on what your understanding is. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. Don't let this country cheat you. People are shouting the dollar, the pound. Even those who have never seen it are already victims of it. Hallelujah. It was a humorous story. Please permit me to share it. One of her former bosses where she was working started doing some funny things like wanting to sleep with her or something. And, and you, know, all, you know all these men that behave as if their heads are not correct. May God punish anyone that wants to destroy the destiny of anybody in the name of Jesus Christ. You are entitled to one wife and God designed it to be enough. Anything more than that, you need deliverance. Say amen. amen. If there's anybody, our fathers, mothers, who are planning another marriage in the name that is above all names, we cancel it right now. Amen. Hallelujah. I just felt like pressing that one in so that we don't let it just pass like that. And listen, the moment... Thank you very much. She has an understanding that you cannot be disadvantaged. It's a mentality. As that one was trying to play all of that nonsense, another one came, born again, honorable member, 
and he looked at her in 24 hours she got a new job upgraded with salary and everything brothers and sisters listen this thing will work for you if you know how to work it if if you think what is happening people are just talking no sir i think it was pastor alpha when you started your phd they get i mean it was it was challenging over scholarship and this but you can see him coming here he's doing his phd and he's on i think you're on scholarship he's on scholarship from university of Jos, and he's just enjoying life see i like you to say it must happen differently with me refuse that thing of 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 the way it's happening to everybody no there is an anointing upon you remember there is an anointing upon you please we are going to rise up and we'll pray we're rounding this up i'm on my way to better days i'm on my way to better days i'm on my way to better days Status is changing. Status is changing. It's no more decline. No more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better day. Prophesy, the Lord is hearing you. My status, status is changing. It's no more decline. I'm on my way to better day. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I like us to pray please let's have the communion we have to be very fast because I want to speak there are destinies that must open up today hallelujah prayer point number one Lord a fresh passion for you above and beyond money faith ministry business going on here lift your voice and pray Lord a fresh passion a fresh passion Shake it back at Baba Baba Baba. Coin on your brain. Shake it back at the better books. A fresh passion. You, O oh Lord, at my desire. I desire you more than my necessary food. Oh, better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere. Pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Revelation chapter 5. Hallelujah. Revelation 5. Please, I'd like us to be sensitive. The communion is a mystery. Jesus said, Except ye eat of my body and drink of my blood he said you cannot have my life the communion is a mystery we're going to do we'll be very very fast as soon as we do this our prayer request as instructed by God now we'll collect it in twofold but that's Maybe when we are praying, we'll be doing that so that we can have it. Ushers, please make sure you get ready. The ones that represent your challenges, according to Exodus 14, 14. I'd like you to pass it first because we are going to burn it right now. That's the instruction that the Lord gave, please. And then the ones that represent your testimonies. When you give that one, I'll ask you to forward that one and we'll pray on it here just like we do the miracle service. Please, ushers, quickly. Quickly, you have to be very fast. Our time is gone. While you're holding it, I'd like you to begin to pray and say the blood of Jesus is ending this captivity in my life forever. Please pray from the depth of your heart. Pray. The Bible says the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit for they are spiritually discerned. The Lord gave us an instruction. Please just pass it round. 
the one that represents challenges pass it to the last person so that the ushers will receive it just the challenges just the challenges there are two requests your expectations your challenges pass the challenges very quickly Hallelujah. Revelations 5 verse 12. Saying with a loud voice. Worthy is the lamb. Not worthy is the king. Not worthy is Jesus. There is a dimension he used to purchase these things for us. And is that dimension as a lamb. The lamb that was what? Slain. It was on account of his being slain. On account of his blood. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive. He has received for us. Power. Riches. Wisdom. Strength. Honor. Glory. And blessing. Notice it did not say blessings. It says blessing. Now look up please. I want you to be sensitive. The blessing. Is an operation of the Holy Spirit upon a man's life. Please listen. The blessing is different from blessings. The blessing is an operation of the Holy Spirit. It's like an anointing. When it comes upon your life like a mantle, the assignment of the blessing is to compel creation to respond to you as though you were in the Garden of Eden. Please listen. When God made man, he blessed them. When the flood came, God blessed Noah. It was, it was um, Isaac that said, make me venison that I will eat, that my soul will rejoice, that I may bless you. What did he give Jacob? That when Esau came, he said, there's nothing left. How did he know it had left him? Listen, the blessing is transferable. You can carry it bodily. God opened my eyes to this revelation and it surprised me. Hallelujah. The blessing does three things. Number one, it attracts people, it attracts resources, and it attracts opportunities. Never forget this. The blessing on you mysteriously but undeniably begins to attract people he said, all men seek for thee. That's what they told Jesus. All men seek for thee. The blessing can make your critics bless you. Although they are talking against you. The blessing can make people you do not know. He said, your gates shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And say, Lord, as I partake of this communion, every every pronouncement every cause of negativism over my life the blessing will take it away today forever lift your voice and pray please lift your voice and pray the blessing is coming upon me blessing will change my life the blessing will veto limitations of my background and take me to another dimension please pray be a believer it doesn't take time it takes the principles of the kingdom hallelujah hallelujah now I'm going to bless the communion. This is ordinary wine and wafers. But the Bible says, is this not the cup of the blessing? The cup of the blessing. There is a mystery. It gives you access.
to receive that mantle i have seen the blessing work i know it works hallelujah now we have to be very fast there are several overflows and please i need you to cooperate with all the people leading there we're going to be very very fast you will come pick the cup and the wafers and drop it if there's anyone under the anointing ushers please as they fall under the anointing shift them away so that we can hurry up on this we have just about 10 or so minutes to do this because we need to prophesy something must come upon your life hallelujah immediately after that please prepare while worship is going on we'll raise high, high praise for two to five minutes and then we'll burn those things and we'll speak father in the name of jesus this is ordinary wafers i stretch my hands over this and the ones outside in all of the overflows one two three outside down to the roadside let this lose its earthly significance as wafers and wine i pray the bible says in hosea chapter 12 it says i have multiplied visions i have spoken to you through the prophets he said i have used similitudes may the power of the highest the power that is responsible for performance come upon these wafers come upon this wine in the name of jesus that everyone who partakes by faith may they step into a strange order of the blessing in the name of jesus god bless you there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus to break every chain let's have a chain come and just take some of your seats break every chain break every chain break every chain there is power there is power Everyone should partake of the communion. Everyone, including children, if you can give them, please give it to them. God bless you. Can we help? We have to be very fast. Please, very fast. Just pick one and then make your way very quickly. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. They will break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. What's happening there? Why the delay? Please stand back let our parents come protocol you are just watching you should direct them please break every chain 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 there's an army there's an army rising there's an army There's an army rising now. They will break every chain. 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 Casting crowns. Lifting hands. Breaking arms. What I've come to do
as you return back to your seat, I'd like you to begin to pray in tongues. Pray in tongues for what is coming upon you. Pray in tongues in the spirit. Go ahead and begin to pray as you return back to your seat. Please, we have to be fast. Just pick the wine, the bread, and then you can give way for others. There is an anointing upon it. Please, as you walk, just come out very fast. We have to be very fast. Beautiful you are. Wonderful you've been. You are glorious. Faithful in all your ways. My help and my reward. You are glorious. My God, beautiful you are, wonderful you be, you are glorious, you are glorious, faithful in your faithful way, I am in my dreams, you are please pray and say lord something must land upon my life tonight an anointing must come upon me an unction from the holy one must swallow up every challenge in my life pray like a believer that you are pray like a believer that you are you are able to change the stories of men, oh God. You are able to change the stories of men.
Hallelujah. If the communion is yet to come, just be patient and pray. You can take the bread and just be patient. Please, if the welfare need help, can we have some hands to help them? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I command the gates that hold the next level of my life be open now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Please pray from your heart. Command the gates. Command the gates. Kapa shuparadaba. Zikete kete pras karababa. Zopere kuto shupre dis kalaba. Brands kapa rato shoto prete kete. Gates be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open. In the name of Jesus, be open in the name of Jesus, be open in the name of Jesus, be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Say after me in the name of Jesus, every cause of hardship, my family my loved ones by the mystery of the blood i bring it to an end right now lift your foot and begin to pray the cause of hardship the cause of pain the cause of sorrow the cause of pain the cause of sorrow loved ones we bring it to an end we bring it to an end. We bring it to an end. By the power of God, we bring it to an end. In the name of Jesus, we bring it to an end. In the name of Jesus, we bring it to an end. We bring it to an end. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, every covenant I enter into, knowingly or knowingly, is responsible for the failure in my life. To the blood, I declare it is broken. Come on, every covenant, every that I've been involved in that is destroying my life shake up a Hallelujah. We are going to take authority over every sickness. Every strange manifestation in your body. The Bible says your body, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Every tree that has not been planted by my father tonight the spirit of infirmity
HIV must leave HIV fight right now it must go Hepatitis. we change genomes from FM to FM blindness blindness we challenge you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing the sound of padlocks. That's what I'm hearing in my ears. Please, I like it to be very sensitive now. I want to pray for you, inside and outside. We have prayed. The number eight stands for new beginning. It must leave you. Everything that has not been by the ordinances of heaven it must leave you right now lift your hands as i pray for you i tell you the fire of god will fall in this place please shift all these things our time is almost up but we must deal with these things when i finish praying at the count of three i like you to shout jesus with all your heart i hear sounds like an opening of a padlock This apostolic anointing, every gate, every altar, every destiny, every family, of the bondage, of the yokes, every fertility, the activities of necromancers, the manipulations of destinies, I declare that I shall. Hallelujah. I see at least 30 ladies, 30, 30 sisters, strange beings that come to you in the night as you sleep. Right now, as I begin to pray, the fire will begin to set you free. Right now, Lord, 30 of them, at least they are fighting.
the power of God is still falling. I see God doing a lot of things with ladies. Ladies especially. Ladies. Sisters. Sisters. Strange spirits that oppress the destinies of people. Strange spirits that tie down people. Sisters at the count of three. I should shout Jesus. I see the king being of Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. The Lord is showing me the cause of death over certain families. I see at least 13 families. It's like a mantle. People die strangely. Keep your hands lifted. I'm about to pray right now. Father, wherever you are right now, you spirit of Shout that name Jesus at the count of three. And seeing chains of people's foot outside. Chains. And the people to release you from the land. Three. find them hallelujah I want to pray for you this is an impartation now this is not deliverance this is going to come mighty on many of us listen there is an anointing that makes men succeed you have prayed there is an anointing that makes men succeed bring this gentleman this is madness that's what I'm saying. Leave him right now. I command you. You must go. Right now. And never return. Restore the fortunes of his family. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. For there is a name that is above every other name. Let him go free in the name of Jesus. Please. If you miss this, you have wasted your fast. This is the time I want you to open up your heart. We have to suspend the number. Of, help them please so they don't enjoy themselves. We have to suspend the number of things right now. Because we are supposed to be praying on the request. I don't want to keep us too long here. But you have to receive this. There is an empowerment that can change a man's life. Please listen. Hear me when I tell you there is an anointing that can change a man. It's not by might. It's not by power. I want you to receive this with all your heart. There will be a mighty impartation. Lift your hands. Father, there is nothing I have that did not come from you. Your people have fasted. They have prayed. It's time for them to enter on usual levels of accomplishments. I stand upon this election of grace. According to the measure of the gift of Christ in my life. At the count of three. 
let heavens be open and let there be strange impartations For the heads of department please where are you quickly just come up here there is an anointing upon me don't stop don't stop be sensitive please in the name of jesus you will step into strange levels of grace join them it's not by might it's not by power in the name of jesus greater fire greater grace step into new dimensions of wisdom fire in the name of jesus drink of the of the spirit greater levels greater fire in the name of jesus greater fire can i pray for you a new level of what 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 said the spirit of i bring you to a new level a new dimension of what and grace in the name of jesus please lift your hands I pray you. they are not seen to pray is going to hit some of you like a tornado. My God, stand up. ministry i want to release it upon you not something you beg for there is a mantle the bible says and japanese was more honorable than his brethren i pray for you I see a fresh unction for psalmistry. Hold your hands. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the instrumentals to everybody. Right now, that fire comes on you. One by one, as I stretch my hands. to you everything that was lost shall be returned to you everything that was stolen shall be restored to you everything that was lost hallelujah Ralph lift your hands there is a mantle of success coming upon you right now Take it right now in the name of Jesus Christ you will never be the same you're a military man you're a pastor but God is about to distinguish you. I see a connection with generals. Generals in the army. The Lord is saying that's what he's doing for you. He will do it by his spirit. He will do it by his grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are they? Okay, come Victor quickly. Yerima, come quickly. Okay, they are the heads of departments left. 
you will step into new levels it's not by power it's not by might step into that strange dimension of the spirit right now in the name of jesus new dimensions of creativity new dimensions of power new dimensions of power i pray for those who are students here hallelujah everyone here marked for death marked for death pastor femi the lord is visiting your family i see an altar of fire that's what i'm seeing an altar this altar has tied down your family i'm seeing particularly your father your father this altar has tied him down tied him down nothing he does prospers but the lord is saying i'm changing it I'm changing it. Listen, I don't care what you have lost in the name that is above all names. I pray for you. Pursue. and we're done i want to release this unction of favor there is an anointing for favor please believe me you argue this life will punish you in a serious way there is an anointing for favor he said i will lose the loins of kings you will suck the breast of kings that's what the bible says lord i pray the mysterious anointing upon this ministry that commands unusual favor I pray for you wherever you are like fire it comes upon you right now take it take it take it right now receive it receive it inside out hallelujah now I want to release the blessing my life is a product of the blessing it's an operation of the spirit that attracts people that's what is responsible for this crowd you're seeing I cannot fully explain it but I know that is dangerously mysterious it's an anointing that gives you access uncommon access I have met kings I have met politicians I have met noble men I have met billionaires I have met strange men brothers and sisters I will lie to you if I tell you it's just because my name is Joshua Selman there is such an anointing I want to release it upon you it's called the blessing I pray for you Shikapatita my god and my king i stand upon my bare foot tonight in the name that is above all names as touching this anointing god has given me a count of three Receive the 
blessing. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. In one minute, I'd like us to pray for all our elderly ones. Who have come to honor us from the depth of your heart prophesy upon them pray for our mothers our fathers scattered all over here in one minute lord we multiply your grace we may not have time to do all of that our time is gone we are very very late but I want to pray here Exodus 16, 16 14 14 don't turn there our time is gone when they got to the Red Sea listen the Egyptians were behind coming with fury and anger before them the Red Sea and they were afraid and Moses said fear not he says stand still and you will see the salvation of the lord he said these egyptians you see today you will see them no more i pray for you every challenge you wrote before the god of israel i come tonight in the form of the book as it has been written hallelujah I pray for your expectations tonight is the night of manifestation if you have it lift it up if you don't lift if you don't have it lift your hands please the Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among men and we beheld its glory father I pray from the realm of the spirit there is a mystery of manifestation he said the spirit and the bride says come come to us the spirit and the word materializes things every please if you are holding even if it's for your loved ones don't worry just lift it to god i'm praying these expectations between now and the end of this month we turn them into testimonies Listen, your eyes have seen them, your ears have heard them. Now I command your hands to handle them. I command your hands to handle them. By the mystery of divine supply, there was a raven that brought food for Elijah at Brook Cherith. I don't care what needs to be done for these expectations to materialize, the power to make it happen. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. And one more time, I call your helpers. Helpers of your destiny. Hear the word of the Lord. From the north to the south, the east and the west. Wherever you are, between now and next week, show up in the life of God's people. Show up in the life of God's people. 
I declare to you, this is the least level you will ever be in life. Everything that has not been working in your life, go back to it now. I command you to walk. I command you to walk. Everyone come jobless here yeah. between now and April. No matter how long it has been, we put a job in your hands by prophecy in the name of Jesus. Everyone on any building project here that has been grounded, the finishers are not in comes upon that project. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Beginning from tonight, that mark of honor and greatness, whoever sees your face, I command them to bless you. Whoever looks upon your face I command a release of favor oh, you shall from today be called Beulah and Hephzibah you shall be called Beulah that well was that garden and Isaac blessed his son and he said the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed I pray for you may a fragrance live your life tonight and attract everyone who should bless you in the name of Jesus, lift your hands and give Jesus praise for tonight's service. Hallelujah. Very quickly, you're worshiping with us tonight for the first time. Wherever you are, please, I'd like you to make your way forward inside and outside. Please clear the way for them in one minute. You notice that for a few days, we did not welcome our new people. Just one minute and we're out of here very quickly. You're worshiping with us for the first time. Make your way. God bless you quickly, quickly, quickly. While they come out, let's listen to the following announcement. While they come out, please make your way. There are so many people. Make your way to the front. We want to bless you and speak over your lives. Now listen, please. I encouraged everyone. Listen, please. Don't be distracted. We're almost done. I encouraged everyone. Was it on Tuesday and when, or Wednesday? When we considered sacrifice, please. I want you to tie a sacrifice not tonight go and ask the lord what is the demand the difference between an offering us and a seed is one is free will a seed is instructed hallelujah i like you to pray from the depth of your heart and say lord instruct me what seed am i going to tie and sow into this ministry into your work please this is not some human manipulation by the grace of God and with all humility, God has been faithful to us. And we are very responsible people. But I will cheat you and I will deceive you and mislead you. If after spending seven days, from the first day we started this, there is no day my seed has not been going, speaking for me. Hallelujah. The Bible says the seed will bruise the head of the serpent. The seed can bruise the head of the serpent. So please, I'd like you to agree with God. For those who came with your seed... If you came with your seed after the service, the treasurer is here. Please listen. Aside from the finance department, no one should, act to, should ask you to give him money. Not online, especially those online. Please tell them, anybody asking you for money online in the name of the ministry is an arm robber. He's a thief. Praise the Lord. Just forward the details to the media department and they'll know how to deal with that issue. We do not make any of such solicitations. Anybody using my face online, just know that you are dealing with a fraudster and a thief. I'm not even on social media. So anybody you see is just a, a, a faithful follower. And if he misuses that opportunity, may the God I serve punish him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So please, but you must make... Can you project the ministry's account number? Is that possible? We have an official account number. If you are making any seeds, people have been asking me. I know one of our mothers was asking me yesterday... Please, any seed, we do not do ministry seeds to personal accounts. No. Don't send funds for ministry to my personal account. No. It's very wrong. We have a ministry account. And these are the details. And so you can please take advantage of it. Make sure that you make a sacrifice. Involve your loved ones. They may criticize you. No problem. When you get the results, it will change your life forever. 
So you can make your payments or you can meet the treasurer, the finance department. The ushers can help you after service in the name of Jesus. Let's honor those who are worshiping with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. And we're five today. Amen and amen. So you are very blessed to be worshiping with us. We're here every Friday. We'll be here next week again, Friday. Do join us. The Lord is changing people. And he will take you from one dimension to the other. For those who came from far, you can go to our media stand, get teachings and all the resources that can bless you even as you go back in Jesus' name. We want to pray and speak over your life. I want you to know you will never be the same. Stretch your hands, saints of God, in one minute and let's prophesy over their lives. In the name of Jesus, we call you blessed. Go back with this grace. Go and reproduce it. May the hand of the Lord be with you. We plant in you a fresh passion for the things of the kingdom. Everything that is not consistent with the ways of the kingdom lives your life forever. We bless you. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I'd like you to follow a gentleman. There's a lady there. They're all waving their hands. They'll have your details and will communicate to you. They welcome you more warmly on our behalf. God bless you and thank you. Thank you so much. Let's honor them once again. Hallelujah. All school of ministry students, classes resume after the long period of fasting. So 8 o'clock, please be in class and be praying. Um, I'll be in Kaduna tomorrow ministering at a church. For those of you who came uh, from Kaduna, you can find out more details with the protocol department. I trust that it will be an awesome time tomorrow in the name that is above all names. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's just allow them to move out and then we'll rise up to share the grace. Um, about the ministry cake, well, I'm not sure it will go around, but I assure you.